the fallen leaves tell a story. The great Elden Ring was shattered. America the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, America's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion. The loathsome Dung Eater! And Sir Gideon Othmere! The All-Knowing! again bless a tarnished of no renown cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord.
Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. Me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, the path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Drafted. You're a tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kali, purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. Goodbye for now. Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I 
offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are Maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Then it's settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. This tiny golden aura is the grace of the Erd Tree. This light once shone in the eyes of your tarnished brethren, but now it is all that guides you. Or so I hear. You can see them, can't you? The rays of grace that guide you through your burden. Upon the cliff in Castle Stormvale, is a shard bearer, a demigod, who inherited a fragment of the shattered Elden Ring. If the rays of grace signal the castle, then the Elden Ring beckons you. As an ally by pact, I pray that you are fit to face the challenge presented by the ring. This way tarnished. May I have a word? A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch, Renna. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee, by Torrent's former master. Tis a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. Forgive mine intrusion, Tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder, before the Tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? Oi! You, you there! Could you help us out, Cully? You? Y yeah, you there! Stop pretending you can't see me! <laughs> What'd you go and do that for? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I remember. Some clod turned me into a tree. You were just breaking the spell, weren't you? Thank you. 
The name's Bok. I was pushed out of the cave, told not to come back. Not ever. Then I ended up as a tree. <laughs> Lucky you came along, really. Oh, what a shame. When they threw me out of the cave, they took everything I owned. And so this is all I have to express my thanks. I hope you can forgive me. Or, well, if you can afford to wait for a while, I could sneak back into the cave and bring back something of actual value. Then I'd be of some real use to you, I reckon. Right. But I'll need a moment. I'm... I'm frightened of them. So I have to gather myself. My knees start knocking, just thinking about that god-awful cave on the shore. Hello? Is anybody there? Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height, servant to the true order and celebrated repudiator of the false. Oh, Ertry, grant me succor! Ah, you've come to lend me your aid, have you? Well, that's... that's very kind, but, um... No. No, the help is very much appreciated, even from a tarnished. Despite appearances, nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. You might have heard of me, Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave, Young Tarnished. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it. A fool! And plumb man to boot. Simply obsessed with blood. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? My fort lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. Take it back for me. Oh, I see. You wish to know the reward? Fret not. The great Kenneth Height is known for his considerable largesse. The celebrations will be lavish indeed upon the dawn of my fort's retreat. Hmm, yes. Now, allow me to furnish you with a little advice. I would take great care to avoid Godric's tarnished hunts were I in your shoes. That depraved lot are obsessed with sacrificing tarnished like you for the sake of grafting. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped-up country bumpkin. Lord? Oh, don't make me laugh. First, he hid himself amongst the womenfolk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots rather than die like a man. Has he no shame, the big girl's blouse? And to think, he's the blood of Godfrey, last of the golden lineage. You almost wouldn't know it to look at him. Yeah, I almost feel sorry for the chap the more I think of it. for you with bated breath. Did you manage to recapture my fort? Oh, excellent news. Just wonderful. And the knight's dead to boot. Well done, my friend. Well done indeed. I knew I was right to trust you. Now, here's your reward, as promised. Go ahead. It's all yours. Time for me to head to the fort. I've much to do. 
First, I'll have to re-establish communication with the demi-humans. What's that look? You don't believe me? Well, under the Earth Tree, co-mingling with the demi-humans is made possible. Even the vulgar shall not be left behind under the rule of true order. Which is why I, Kenneth Height, next in line as the rightful ruler of Limgrave, have sworn to uphold it. Just you watch, my friend. Just you watch. Ah, yes. I've, uh, I've been meaning to ask, would you like to enter my service? I see bright things in your future, stout warrior. Enter into my service and learn the workings of the Erd Tree's true order. And who knows? Perhaps sometime down the line, the grace of gold will return to those tarnished eyes of yours. What say you? A fine accord, is it not? Very well, very well indeed. I knew I saw something in you. I shall await you at my fort. We shall hold the ceremony for your knighting there, I think. I see great things ahead of us. We are truly by the Erd Tree blessed. Suppose you must have seen it by now, yes. The sorry state of my fort. Oh, indeed, it is a foul fate for a land to be without a ruler. One must be found with haste, and not that awful Godric, but a true and stalwart lord of the proper lineage to take the reins of Limgrave. I am sorry to have lifted your hopes. But I haven't the authority to raise you to knighthood, as things stand. The great Kenneth Height issues his sincerest apology. But now, I must begin my search post-haste for a true and stalwart lord of the proper lineage to take the reins of Limgrave. Spoken echoes linger here, words of Queen Marika, who vanished long ago. If you wish, I will share them with you. Very well. In Marika's own words, my lord and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, Ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar. Where ye will live... ...and die. Well... ...perhaps that might serve you... ...in lieu of a maiden's guidance. Weren't you... Well, you're back. Care to buy something? The howl of a wolf. In the mistwood. I suppose he must still be skulking about. I know. Why not meet him for yourself? Next time you hear the wolf's howl, make this signal right under the source. Oh, don't fret. There is nothing to fear. I just have an inkling the two of you might hit it off. Goodbye, for now. Ooh. 
Who goes there? Carly sent you, did he? Ever the bloody busybody. Hmm. Maybe to him you don't seem so strange. The name's Blythe. I'm looking for a man who goes by Darrowell. He fled somewhere nearby. Or so I've heard. Come tell me if you find him before I do. I can offer you ample reward. Darrowell is nothing but a traitor, and in need of a fitting end to his tale. Ah, then you met Blythe, did you? Wonderful. I'm glad I pointed you in his direction. He's boorish, blunt, and couldn't find his nose with both hands. But he's a good egg. I think the two of you are sure to find the best in one another. Darrow, rotting in a cell is no true justice. No. This is where it ends for you. to work for it, but it's done. Don't say I'm not a man of my word. Here's your prize. Oh, yes. I should say. If you venture north to Rhea Lucaria and come across a venerable blacksmith who's a little on the large side, tell him I sent you. And he'll be sure to treat you right. I owe you one, I reckon. Wait, weren't you... Well, you're back. Care to buy something? There are others of my people who yet survive in these lands. If the mood takes you and you meet one, then offer them some trade, won't you? My people, wanderers all have long been spurned by the grace of gold, which is why we cannot settle but instead are forced into this pitiful, unceasing journey. But thanks to that, things are not so different for us now. Though the Elden Ring is shattered, I think this makes us kindred spirits of sorts. Your people, the Tarnished, and mine. Perhaps you don't need to hear this, but see that no harm comes to my kin. We have a saying, we wanderers, lament not your solitude. Expect no sympathy, no regard, nothing. But if anyone dares harm us, show them no mercy. That is our code, so to speak. Just the way we are, deeply unforgiving. Goodbye for now. You must be the new Tarnished. You do well to steer clear of a gill lake, fledgling. A dragon roosts there, and it's as fearsome as it is majestic. So, unless you're mad, or wish to be burned alive, stay clear of the lake. Don't be a fool. Turn back before it's too late.
Beautiful work. Felling that dragon. And as such, there's something you might like to know. The heart you brought back. It's used in dragon communion. If you should find yourself overcome by hunger for the heart, yearning for its strength, then seek the decrepit church on the little island off the western coast. You must not forget, though, those who partake in dragon communion will one day shed their humanity, their hunger for dragon, their yearning. Only worsens until the floodgates burst. Unleashing eternal torment. The strength of a mighty dragon. Magnificent. But deadly. It's no surprise that dragon communion is ruinous. in and beat you to a pulp. You'll end up just like me. go and do a thing like that. My mum was a seamstress, and that sewing kit was all I had to remember her by. I always wanted to be just like sweet old mum. Oh, then I s suppose I, I can't just curl up and die, can I? to a man's personal belongings, huh? You scheming little thief! The gods demand repentance! Cough up your coin! All of it! Wait, wait, please! I, I surrender! Wait for 
a demi-human or some such. <laughs> but an innocent mistake, I assure you. Well, water under the bridge. Now we're squared up. How about we play nice from now on? A true man of reason. Just what I like about you. I'm Patches. Patches the untethered. Tarnished like you, only free-spirited. Nomadic, you might say. Only for now. Those retired soldiers turned bandits, and they're paying for my gruel. In exchange for my, well, showing them the ropes. But honestly, this looting racket is bloody terrifying. Frankly, I'm ready to wash my hands clean. Let me set up a legitimate shop. So don't be a stranger. I'll be ready to wheel and deal come next time. <laughs> Well, nice of you to drop in, finally. It's all a bit ad hoc, but I'm sure you'll find something. And welcome to Patches Emporium, where you won't need a refund, because everything's top-notch. Yeah, I had those bandits make a clean break. Now they're all suppliers, and good ones at that. I mean, they don't understand a word I'm saying, but it hardly matters. We have a natural connection. <laughs> They're all foot soldiers. Survivors of a defeated army. Worked to the bone by their high and mighty lord. Only to be thrown out with the rubbish. <sighs> it's the same old story everywhere I go. <sighs> to hell with it all. Hmm. Wondering what's inside the treasure chest. Well... It's, uh, nothing too special. Just something I'm saving as thanks for a very valuable customer. But then again, it would fetch some spectacular coin. And besides, this valuable customer could be a long time coming. Huh? Everything is give and take. Give and take. Cheers for that. Well, I should have known, you scheming little thief. The gods demand vengeance. Vengeance! in a flash like that. Well, maybe it's a sign to keep your mitts off what's not rightly yours, hmm? But I'll forgive you. View it as a learning experience. At any rate, it's just nice to see you safe. Well, don't miss all the bargains here at Patches Emporium. <laughs> Stingy little beggar. Try to find it in your heart next time, eh? Hello? Is somebody there? Might I bend your ear for a moment, please? My name is Arena. I've escaped from Castle Morn to the south. The servants there have rebelled. I... I can't be sure what it is. My eyesight's been weak since birth, you see. But I swear I heard frightful howling from all over. My good father secreted me out the castle, but decided himself to stay. He says it's his duty. As commander, I... I fear for father's life. The servants are full of wrath, filled with hatred for every one of us. 
They've since come for every one of the companions I escaped with. They haven't spared a soul. I fear it's no different at Castle Morn. Please, I implore you. Would you mind taking a letter to my father? At the castle, and my soul wishes that he escape. Even if his honor should be the price. Please. I just want him to be safe. Thank you. Dearly. Then please, take this. Deliver it to my father, who remains in the castle, if you please. Ah, uh, there's a face I've not seen before. I'm Edgar, warden of this castle, as ordained by Lord Godric himself. But you can see how things have turned out. The menials have all rebelled. They gave me good service, or so I thought. But it seems it was all an act. Foul creatures, as I said, and true enough, they're foul inside and out. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but whatever you come here to do, I'm afraid Castle Morn won't hold much longer. Take this, by way of apology. I see. From Arena. Thank you. I mean, you're dead. But I can't leave yet. Even if the castle should fall, as commander, I must remain to ensure the treasured Sword of Morn does not fall into the wrong hands. Debt for keeping the sword from those fallen creatures. I'm no longer bound by duty. Once I've rescued Arena, I will spend my remaining days with her. Thanks to you, I will be reunited with Arena and devote my remaining days to her. Arena has a gentle nature, though. I only hope it remains intact. Arena, how could this be? My daughter deserved better. The fault lies with me. I chose duty over my daughter's safety. And that is how fate has answered. I'll find them. The foul wretch is responsible for this. I'll hunt them down and exterminate every last one of them. Rest assured, Arena. It will be done. Me? I'm searching for my purpose, given to me by my mother inside the Earth Tree, long ago, for the reason that I yet live, burned and bodiless. There is something for which I must apologize. I've acted the Finger Maiden, yet can offer no guidance. I am no maiden. My purpose was long ago lost. 
Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? In Marika's own words, then, after thy death, I will give back what I once claimed. Return to the lands between. Wage war. And brandish the Elden Ring. Grow strong in the face of death. Warriors of my lord. Lord Godfrey. Everyone's... been grafted? Everyone who came with me. They crossed the sea for me. They fought for me. <laughs> Only to have their arms taken. Their legs taken. Even their heads taken. Taken and stuck to the spider. Did you know? If you're grafted by the spider, you become a chrysalid. It's quite a lark when you think about it. You're all on your own, are you? And heading to Stormvale Castle. Enticed by the one in the white mask, I suppose. Oh, you've come to be one with the spider? Well, that makes us two peas in a pod. But I don't have your courage. It's scary, you know, having your arms cut off. Or legs. Or your head. I want to be like everyone else, but I'm just too scared. I'm nothing but a craven. Oh, I know. Can you take this little one along with you? The poor thing deserves someone braver than myself. And the spirits look rather fondly upon you. It will be glad of your company, I think, the little one. It was a pleasure to see you. Oh, can you pass on a message for me? If you see the little chrysalids in Stormvale Castle, tell them I love them. And that, despite my craven heart, I'm sure I'll be joining their club soon enough. I'm finally getting the hang of this whole pain thing, you know? Does your faith in the guidance of grace hold firm, despite the collapse of the Golden Order? Honest to a fault, I see. Such thoughts won't behoove you as a tarnished, but there's nothing wrong with that. Any interest in bearing the torch of my battle arts? All I know is the sword. Picked up a fair few tricks in my time, too. Now's the time to pass them on to a good tarnished like you. There's a myriad of battle arts in these lands that I've yet to discover. Mementos of all the warriors who raised their arms in battle, lost and died. A fine tale, all told of true chivalric romance. That's how I fell in love with the sword. 
and the arts of combat. It grants meaning even to falling in battle, to death itself. Not floating your boat, eh? Well, there's no rush. Knowledge of the arts can wait another day. Hello? Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. Hello? Anyone? Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please, can you help me out of this? My thanks, a thousand thanks. Just give me a good smack from the rear with something nice and big. And I'll pop clean out, I'm sure. Don't dally. Uh, there's no need to fret, I'm very well trained. Give it your all, I say. wallop of yours almost spelt the end of me. <laughs> ah. Well, I'm out now, and that's what counts. I thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like you to have this. Once again, the pleasure is mine. I am the warrior Jar known as Alexander. Iron Fist Alexander, in fact. I journey to the East, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet, rot-blighted Kalid Wilds. And upon their southern edge is Redmain Castle, in which a festival of combat is being held. I'd heard whispers of such festivities before. Doesn't the notion set your breast a flutter? <laughs> There's no mistake, is there? Death has left its mark once again. Ah, a tarnished, are you? I'm known as D. I hunt down those who live in death and weed their death root. Heed my warning. The village here has been touched by death. And worse yet, it is home to a mariner. If you value your life, then go no further. into reason, eh? But with a prowess for weed in death root. Hmm. How would you like to earn the strength of beasts? If you're inclined to hunt more of those who live in death and weed their death root, then I'll introduce you to Garank, the beast clergyman. I have a matter of my own to attend to, and the beast himself wishes for someone to take my place. What say you? Show me your map. I've marked the location for you, of a hidden gateway. It will lead you to Garank, the beast clergyman. I have a matter of my own to attend to. 
I spotted the mark of the centipede here in the village. An ill omen symbol that should not be. Someone or something threatens the sanctity of the Golden Order and must be eradicated. In search of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. Forgive me. I've been testing you to see whether or not Grace truly does guide you, and whether you are fit to face the challenge that entails. It seems my worries were unfounded. Torrent had your measure from the very start, whereas I merely pretended. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. I can take you to the Round Table Hole, gathering place of tarnished champions, guided by grace. Very well. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. Oh, 
I see you've just arrived. Welcome to the Round Table Hold. I'm Corin, a man of the cloth. I teach incantations, the strength granted us by the two fingers, and explore the secrets of the Golden Order, so that one day, if a tarnished of the Round Table Hold should become Elden Lord, I might counsel them, ensuring order regains its proper form, writing rule over men. By the way, do you still see it? The guidance of grace. You do? Wonderful news. Most tarnished are blind to it these days. You are something of a rare breed. Well, what do you say? Care to learn an incantation of the two fingers? May the golden order shine through you. You've met Garank, I take it. Then owing to our duties shared, we are now comrades in arms. I think you've earned this. The power of the Golden Order to aid the hunt of those who live in death. I serve the Golden Order that I might put this crooked land to rights, following only the guidance of the Great Elden Ring. Those who live in death fall outside the principles of the Golden Order. Their mere existence sullies the guidance of gold, tainting its truth. And so it is, the vermin must be exterminated. Down to the very last. Ah, hello. You must be new here. I'm... well, just call me Dialos. The honor of one's house holds little import in these lands. By the way, have you met a young woman named Lanya on your travels? She's my servant, but fickle as the wind. Take your eyes off her for but a moment and she's good as gone. If you find her, please be sure to tell me. Be sure to tell me if you meet a young woman named Lanya. She's a servant to my house. She's been my companion since childhood. I've lost count of the number of times I've had to find her like this. Honestly, she's such a little tomboy. Oh, this is a rare occasion. I can't remember the last time a new tarnished made their way to the round table. Very well. As your senior, I bid you welcome. It is safe here. You may let down your guard. Allow me a word of advice. As your senior, you are a mere visitor to the round table. Nothing more. A house guest. Yet to earn their keep. Remember your place, newcomer. too much into it. Well, no grudge against you. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. Besides, I don't mind smithing. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. Even time, technique never fails. Besides, it helps me forget. The sheer terror of her. Greetings, great champion called by grace. I am Fia. Circumstances have compelled my stay at the round table hold. Great champion, would you allow me to hold you? But briefly, perhaps you might share with me some of your lively vigor. 
and your stout-heartedness. Doing so will grant me the warmth of a champion. And you, I am sure, will bear a Baldekin's blessing. Do you think it vulgar, perhaps? Where I come from, it is a sacred act. Ah, my thanks, great champion. thing I am afraid come back to me should you require another I will take you in my arms as often as you need What do you need? I have little time to spare. Oh, are you aggrieved? At the notion you are but a visitant here, then you would do well to remember the first words of grace given to you. Stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. If those words held any meaning to you, follow the guidance of grace. Lay low the shard bearers and claim for yourself a great rune. Do so, and the doors to the round tables in the chamber will open, and you will receive the wisdom of the two fingers. Once the wisdom of the two fingers becomes your own, I'll impart to you a proper welcome. As a true member of the round table, I have high hopes for you. I'm sick and tired of them. These Nambi Bambi times think us no more than a shelter from the rain. Oh, well done. Well done indeed. You made it through that entire mess all the way to Stormvale. And off you trotted to the round table hold. My sincerest. Congratulations, but how did you find the round table? Oh, you don't have to say it. Before, the round table was chock full of venerated warriors, but now it's home to puff chests and has beans. I fear you've been terribly disappointed. I don't blame you. But still, the round table has its perks. Why not earn a seat? Fly straight and true, so to speak. Ah, then you're interested. A wise choice indeed. To join the round table proper, you must acquire a great room and request audience with the two fingers in the inner chamber. They are the purported masters of the grace that guides your kind, the tarnished. Hmm. Yes. Pay them a visit, so that you may see for yourself. Challenge Godric the Grafted, Lord of Stormvale, to acquire a great room. Decrepit he may be, but a demigod he remains. And of course, an inheritor of a great rune. Worse yet, I hear old Godric's acquired a ferocious new toy to graft. So, prepare for the worst.
destroy the opening right here. The guards don't know about it. You breach the castle undetected. <laughs> yes, that's the spirit. You're just the kind of tarnish that I like. I pray for your success. Some corpses? Can't just leave them about, you know? They'll start to pong, eh? Oh, hello. <laughs> no, don't you mind me for a minute. I it's my job to keep the grounds clean. Ah, nice to meet you. The pleasure's mine. Roger is the name. A sorcerer, as uh, you might have guessed. I'm looking for a little something here in the castle. When I'm not hot-footing it from the troops, that is. But enough about me. What are you doing here in Stormvale Castle? This place is bristling with tarnished hunters, you know. They sacrifice our kind for grafting. Not exactly a place I'd stroll into without a purpose in mind. See, here to challenge Godric and lay your hands upon a great rune, are you? You can see it then, I take it. The guidance of grace. Well, enjoy it while you can. I'm tarnished, like you. But unlike you, I've seen neither hide nor hair of this guidance for the longest time. Still, I won't forget how it felt when I first came here, to the lands between. I'm privy to a few magical battle arts. Would you care to learn one? As a fellow tarnished, once guided by grace, I'd love to help you out, if it please. The battle art you've learned is of the Glintstone family. They were conceived at the great academy of Rhea Lucaria, to the north of this castle. In the past, they obeyed laws which contravened the Golden Order, or so I'm told. Fascinating, isn't it? that the Golden Order was pliable enough to absorb practices that contradicted itself in the past. With the Order broken, twisted, and in need of repair, such adaptability is more important now than ever. chrysalids the message that I love them and that despite my craven heart I'm sure I'll be joining their club soon enough what's this a keepsake from my men oh, goodness me I can't Do any 
anything. I think I'll head to the round table hold. Perhaps I'll find my purpose there. Greetings. Nice to see you again. My name is Roderica. I should have told you sooner. Isn't this place impressive though? The round table hold. Covert quarters of the two fingers. And gathering place of champions who vie to become Elden Lord. I never knew the guidance bestowed upon us tarnished had such fantastic roots. Although, it's all a bit much for me, in truth. I'm still looking for my own purpose. Oh, and please allow me to express my thanks for giving me that keepsake from my men. It was as if I was frozen with self-pity. I failed them at every turn. You have my gratitude. Please, take this. The girl you bought here, she's crestfallen and can scarcely swing a blade. But she has a gift for spirit tuning. I saw another one like her long ago. Their eyes share the same hue. It's all a bit much for me, in truth. I'm still looking for my own purpose. You're telling me I possess some kind of gift? I don't believe you. But if I do have this talent, and goodness knows it would be my first, I suppose I should try to hone it, shouldn't I? I'll ask Master Hugh to teach me. Certainly he does appear intimidating and holds no love for us tarnished. But I know he's trapped here at the round table hold. So, I can tell. He's a gentle soul underneath it all. The girl. What about her? of your mind who'd stay with an ugly brute who only knows how to smith absurd besides she'd never agree to it i refuse to believe it i don't doubt you but i know when something's too good to be true Pleased to see you again. Would you like me to hold you once more? The blessing is still aflame in your breast, dear. Would you like to be held regardless? Now, come closer. Figure. From a number of champions, I lay with the remains of an exalted noble to grant him another chance at life. To do so is the purpose of my being. But before I could bear the noble into new life, I was awakened by the guidance of grace and chased from my birthplace. Pray. Be kind. Despite all that, I still wish to be a deathbed companion. So please, let me hold you like this, as often as it takes. Then good day to you, my dear.
be proud. You were a fine warrior. Your only mistake was your choice of master. Let the winds lift you to a higher place. Well, who do we have here? Tarnished, are you? Clearly not one of Godric's lot. I am Nefeli Lu. Tarnished and warrior like you. I'm here by decree of my father. How utterly repellent this is. This grafting of Godric's ill befits a lord. He's tainted the very winds. If you intend to challenge Godric, I ask you call upon me. The winds run foul with his deeds. I'm certain father would permit me aid the fight. to the bone. Pushing me about like that? And after all that grafting? Where did that get you? Look down on me, would ya? Godric, you filthy slug. Feel it. Feel it. Feel my bloody wrath. Oh. Hello there. This 
weasel was... Godric was always looking down on me. He got what he bloody deserved thanks to you. I tell you though, what goes around comes around. He had an ugly heart, an uglier countenance, and met the ugliest of ends, eh? <laughs> Are you that new tarnished? You've done well. I am Enya, the finger reader. I interpret the words of the fingers, envoys to the greater will. Look there. The fingers tremble to welcome you, Shardbearer. Let their wisdom wash over you. Great Elden Ring, root of the Golden Order, anchor of all lands, giver of grace, wellspring of all joy. Until it was shattered, the tragic corruption of the Order has taken its toll across the realm Life lies in ruin, fallen to pieces. Foul curses and misery spread, unabating. But the greater will has not abandoned the realm, nor the life that inhabits it. So it is that the tarnished are guided by grace, called to act. Brave Tarnished, your great rune is a handsome shard of the Elden Ring. Seek another of its kind to become Elden Lord and restore the Golden Order. Let the words of the fingers guide you. Well, well, I see. A remembrance of gold has found its way into your possession. Demigods and even the crater of the champions are hewn by the Earth Tree upon their end into remembrances. They are valuable indeed. These remembrances yet house the power of their former masters. And should you wish to wield that same power, well, I will lend you the strength of the fingers. Oh, do not recoil from my offer. The fingers guide us all, and you tarnish. You are here to take, are you not? Ah, great runes are the stuff of demigods. The children of the goddess, Queen Marika. She who is vessel of the Elden Ring. Tainted by the strength of their runes, her children warred, but none could become Elden Lord. And so grace was extended to your kind, the tarnished. Listen, the fingers speak. The greater will has long renounced the demigods. Tarnished. Show no mercy. Have their heads. Take all they have left. Indeed. But remember one thing. The demigods are each and all the direct offspring of Queen Marika. Godric the Grafted was but a distant relation. The runt of the litter. His divine blood sorely diluted. Now go forth. 
Let the words of the fingers guide you. You again. I thought you'd receive a summons to the round table. Nefeli Lu. We met at Stonevale. I'm glad to see you here. I have something for you. I found it in Godric's grafting grounds. You defeated him. You should have it. Make good use of it. I don't intend to make a habit of scavenging corpses. Ah, yes. I wonder if you've met my foster father. He's in his study. The room enters guarding just over there. If you haven't already, I advise you introduce yourself. Father is leader of the round table. I'm sure talking to him will be worth your while. It's about time I headed off. I'll see you again, warrior, should the fates deign it. You've received the wisdom of the two fingers, have you not? Then, just as promised, I bid you welcome. As a true member of the Round Table, I am known as Gideon Ofnir. As a tarnished who wishes to stand before the Elden Ring and become Elden Lord, I am accumulating knowledge to be all-knowing. You now belong to a select group of fellows. As such, I ask that you remain constant. You'll be after more great runes now, eh? Then as your fellow, allow me to divulge a little knowledge. The inheritors of the great runes, the shard bearers. We of the round table know the location of five of them, including the one you defeated. Godric the Grafted, Lord of Stormvale. General Radan, who fought Melania and her rot to a standstill in the Caled Wilds. Praetor Rykard, Lord of the Volcano Manor of Mount Gelmir. Morgoth, the Grace Given, Veiled Monarch and Lord of Lame Dell. And Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, ruler of Rhea Lucaria's Academy. You'll still be after more great runes, won't you? So, Godric the Grafted, Lord of Stormvale. Despite being the blood of Godfrey, first Elden Lord, he's a grotesque old fool grasping for power. His castle lies upon the cliff to Limgrave's northwest, but I suspect you know that well enough already. General Radan, the famed Red Lion and Scourge of the Stars, is a ferocious warrior. He fought Melania and her rot to a standstill in the Caled Wilds to Limgrave's east. And now Caled has been engulfed by the Scarlet Rot, even approaching the region is no mean feat. I've heard survivors of Radan's army are still in the wilds, staving off the rot with fire. And if it's true, I suspect Radan is still there as well, in Caled. Though, I doubt he much resembles his former self anymore. Praetor Rykard is the lord of the Volcano Manor on Mount Gelmir. He is a ruthless justicia who commands a company of inquisitors, reviled for his serpentine demeanor. The volcano, Mount Gelmir, lies in the west of the Altus Plateau, the realm of the Erd Tree. It was the stage of the most appalling battle in the entirety of the Shattering. Rykard has committed the grave sin of blasphemy, marking himself as an enemy never to be forgiven. Morgoth the Grace given is Lord of Landell, the capital city. It lies at the foot of the Erd Tree, in the east of the Altus Plateau. But the Two Fingers forbid us from venturing there, until we've acquired enough great runes to repair the Elden Ring. Set your sights elsewhere for the time being. The Veiled Monarch can wait. The Academy of Rhea Lucaria lies to Limgrave's north, towering over the mist-laden lands of Lyurnia. Renala is queen of the Carian royals, who govern the Academy. But Renala herself is no demigod. Her beloved Radagon left her to become Queen Marika's second husband taking the title of King Consort. The Great Rune dwells within the Amber Egg, 
That was Radigan's gift to her. I understand you've been speaking to Nefeli. She's my daughter. I took her in when she lost the guidance of grace. Though a mere axe-wielding barbarian, her youthful credulity suited my purposes. So I put her to work. Do not hesitate to employ her. Should her services benefit you? Despite her looks, she is more than capable in the press of battle. Good to see you again. Thank you very much. I have you to thank, don't I? For persuading Master Hugh. I can happily announce that he has taught me the noble toil of spirit tuning. I'm as yet unsure of what I might be able to accomplish. But if I might be able to help you all, I'd certainly like to try. And if there's any chance to ease the suffering of my dear men who were grafted, well, I certainly must try. Roderica, the spirit tune apprentice. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Now, look at you. Those eyes tell a story of a challenger who's felled his mark. Find him well. Now lay out your arms. I spoke with the girl. She has a gift for spirit tuning. So I told her everything I know. I'm indebted to a spirit tuner I met long ago. It was all I could do to honor her. I'm sorry I doubted you. Ah, we meet again after all. I apologize for any offense given by my bearing, but I'm quite unable to move. You see. So, what do you need? Ah, you defeated Godric and claimed yourself a great rune. Mm. Looks like we both got what we wanted out of Stormvale, didn't we? Well done, friend. Something to mark the occasion. Go on, take it. As you might have guessed, I still can't move. My fighting days are behind me. No need to be polite. I've no use for it anymore. The misshapen corpse under Stormvale. That is a sacred relic of the Black Knives plot, as that famed night of assassination is known. It happened during the golden age of the Erd Tree, long before the shattering of the Elden Ring. Someone stole a fragment of the Rune of Death from Malaketh, the Black Blade and on a bitter night, murdered Godwin the Golden. That was the first recorded death of a demigod in all history, and it became the catalyst. Soon, the Elden Ring was smashed, and thus sprang forth the war known as the Shattering. I once wished to become a scholar, you see. I've spent many an hour scouring the archives for knowledge of that fateful plot. The world has grown crooked, and if you intend to put it to rights, you'd better understand what happened to make it this way. Hmm? And that thing is to blame for the shape I'm in now. I urge the utmost caution. Don't disturb the corpse more than necessary. Ah, so you've met D. D is an old friend. We found ourselves journeying together for a time, bound by our exploration of death. But our paths have since diverged, never again to cross. Though that's hardly an uncommon fate for two friends. Dee was telling me that he discovered the mark of the centipede. The centipede is an ancient symbol of the curse mark. As long as whoever finds and uses it is not nefarious by nature, then we may be able to form an alliance. If only I could speak to them in person, and if they were like you, all the better. Ah, hello. You've been busy weeding Deathroot, I take it. I thank you, as your brother in arms. So what can I do for you? Are you acquainted with a man named Roger? You know, the piteous fellow hiding away on the balcony. He was a formidable spellblade in times past. Don't let his easy air deceive you. 
He was wise beyond his years, stout of heart and clear of mind. No more, though. You see him now, ravaged by thorns, muttering and rambling, like he's half dead already. I can't stomach to watch. Take well the lesson, friend. That's how you end up when seduced by those who live in death. When grace is sullied, it rots people from the inside. Breaks them. Oh, your divinity have mercy and grant me forgiveness. The road is yet long, a god is not easily felled. But one day without fail you will have your wish. So please grant me forgiveness, Queen America. Huh. You, is it? I didn't notice you there. I'll be doing my job, same as ever. Just lay out your arms. Those words were not meant for you. I may be prisoner to you, tarnished lot. But my prayers are mine. And mine alone. Well... I've had my say. I'll be more careful too. You are so very warm. My dear, have you ever heard of Black Knife Prince? Dear Roger likes to talk of them when abed, and the ancient plot in which the first of the demigods was slain. The black knives wielded by the assassins who committed the act, along with the impressions they made, somehow hide the truth of the conspiracy. These grand affairs are hardly my forte, but dear Roger began to weep as he spoke. In truth, I've heard tell from someone else about the Black Knife prints that fascinate dear Roger so. But it wouldn't be right to give this to him, stuck as he is in the round table hole. Perhaps you could make use of it? you, Master. Do you uh, remember me? Bok, the demi-human. You helped me before, and retrieved my sewing needle. Please, Master, allow me to serve you as your seamster. I can't make nothing from scratch, but 
I'm happy to make adjustments to your garments. Master, I was wondering, do you ever make adjustments to your garb yourself? I would, well, rather you let me do the job when possible, please. I don't ask anything in return, you know, and, well, I am your personal seamster after all. Oh, going so soon? Uh, please do be safe on your journeys. Hello? Is someone there? My name is Hayata, and I'm journeying in search of the distant light. If I might be so bold as to ask, would you donate any shabriri grapes in your possession to me? My eyesight has been weak since birth, you see. I can't tell which way I'm supposed to go next, but when I eat one of those grapes, I can feel a distant light in the back of my eyes. It will lead me to my true duty. ...is a finger maiden. Oh, many thanks to you. Now I can feel the distant light once more. You are most kind indeed. May the blessing of the fingers be upon you. You're tarnished, aren't you? Then... Perhaps you could spare some runes. Believe it or not, I studied Plinstone sorceries at the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. For a small donation, I'd be happy to share my knowledge. Well, bless you, bless you. You're a true saint. My name is Topes. Presuming you're interested, I can teach you sorceries, as promised. Only... None of them are particularly great. Apologies, friend. I'm afraid my meager sorceries are no match for your generosity. Oh, right. I can tell you what I know about this place. That should help a bit. You've seen that structure to the north, towering over the water. That's the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, where we study glintstone sorceries. Only its doors have been closed for quite some time now. After they declared they wouldn't interfere with the shattering, the Academy cast repelling seals on the East Gate leading to the capital, and the South Gate leading here. As you might have guessed, the seals are still active, making entry to the Academy impossible without a glintstone key. And so I'm stuck here. A fledgling sorcerer, with little chance of acquiring a key. When they cast the seals, I'd just popped out. And now I'm uprooted from my place of learning. Why not find yourself a glintstone key? Without one, you can't pass through the academy, and you'll never reach the Erdtree capital. And if you find an extra glintstone key, perhaps, once you've tied up all your loose ends, and I can be very patient, would you consider donating it to me? I know it. I'm a blunt stone. Merely a hint of talent or sorcery. But still, my place is at the Academy. Oh, well. I it's been a long while. It's me. Patches the Untethered. I'm still in business, if you can believe it. Now I'm my only supplier, so I haven't got much. But everything here is top-notch. Hatches Emporium, now open in Rhea Lucaria. You're making your way to the Erd Tree, no? Well, I heard something that might help. A special means of reaching your destination. Have you ever seen an Iron Virgin? The clunky contraptions are whirlwinds of sickles and spiked wheels. But long ago, they were endowed with a spell of transposition. And get this, a surviving virgin sits at the bottom of the big water wheel in the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, its transpositional powers fully intact. So right, if you get caught in it on purpose, it'll chuck you out straight at the base of the Erd Tree. Or so I'm told. <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, uh, have you met that girl, Raya? She's a strange one, but I believe she was in need of help. Not that it's any of my business, but if she rings your bell, why not lend her an ear? Cheers for that! Hello? Please? Over here? Hello? It's rather chilly here, isn't it? My mistress sent me off on an errand, but I was accosted by a ruffian. And now I'm in a bind. Could I ask you lend a hand? Perhaps. That thug made off with a precious necklace. I need someone to retrieve it. Only... He, too, is tarnished. If you've any qualms confronting your own, I shall find another. Oh, thank you dearly. What a blessing that we've met like this. The thug should be resting at an abandoned home down the way. Please, I must have the necklace back. What are you looking at? You trying to start something, mate? Ah, that necklace what you're after, is it? Mm. Well, show me what it's worth to you, and I'll consider parting ways with it. I'm not in love with it or nothing. You're a shrewd one, Chief. First, you hand me the runes. And don't try nothing, neither. Take it. Things no damn use to anyone anyway. Your bloody idea, mate. Don't come crying to me later. Oh, piss off. What is it now? Oh, I see. You want some of me prawn? Freshly cooked it is. All right then. It's yours. If you can meet me price. I could be persuaded to sell you some other bits too, if you've got the runes. You're tarnished too, ain't you? Can you see it then? The guidance of grace, I mean. I can't see it at all no more. Makes no bloody sense anyway. Why some no-name shithead like me should get called to the lands between. Cruel bloody joke, you ask me. Maybe something went tits over it. Maybe it's been broke for a good long time. The earth tree, I'm saying. Oh. So you met the girl, did you? All right, well. Sod the particulars of the matter. But it ain't my fault she's stupid enough to get duped, is it? Anyway, she ain't all right, that one. Look, she ain't died on the bloody roadside, I reckon. Never met someone with a taste for brawn or can trust. We'd make good mates, I reckon. I'll be seeing you. The thug should be resting at an abandoned home down the way. Please, I must have the necklace back. Oh, yes. That is my missing necklace. Thank you kindly. I am in your debt. Did I forget to announce myself? I am Raya, in the service of Lady Tanith of the Volcano Manor. I seek stalwart tarnished, who might join our house. You are very brave yourself. Not only a steady hand, but a steady heart. Merciless, even to your own kind. Such strength is precisely what my mistress seeks. Please. Take this. Brave Tarnished. Seek the Altus Plateau, the realm of the Erd Tree. Most Tarnished are doomed to wander the outskirts of the lands between, peering wistfully at the towering Erd Tree. But you are no ordinary Tarnished. And once that is proven, 
the Volcano Manor will fully extend its invitation to fight amongst a family of champions. Oh, and one more thing, only for you. This land of Liernia is connected to the Altus Plateau by the Grand Lift of Dectus, beyond the High Road. But the lift has been defunct for an age, meaning there's no simple means of passage. Instead, you must seek the old ruins in the cliff, at the base of the valley. Near the Grand Lift, there's an old tunnel. It was excavated from both ends, linking Liernia to the Altus Plateau. I have faith in you. A champion through and through. I do hope that we can meet again. Oh, love you. It's me, Dialos. Answer me, would you? Hello, friend. Tell me if you know, would you? The whereabouts of the hidden house of those despicable fiends. The recusants who hunt their fellow tarnished. They laid hands upon my servant Lanya, and I refused to let the insult stand. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood. I, Dialos, swear to deliver the message. It. The recusants sent a lackey. Can you believe they invited me to join them? Now, after what they did, I can scarcely believe it myself. Did they think me a fool? You might be surprised to learn I took them up on the offer. Then I only had to ask. The location of the recusant hideout. It's on Mount Gelmir, found off the old road that leads west from the town of Windmills. That's where they hide. The manor on the peak. Just you wait, wretched recusants. You'll rue the day you insulted my name by laying hands on Lanya. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood, after all. Always good to see you safe. Son, what do you need? This is a black knife print. I can scarcely believe you managed to get your hands on this. You recall our conversation about the Knight of the Black Knives, yes? They say the assassins who carried out the deed were scions of the Eternal City. A group entirely of women, arrayed in armor of silver under cloaks which fooled the eye. The knives they wielded, though, were imparted with the power of the Rune of Death through sinister rite. Please, I beg of you, lend me the knife print for a time. I'd love nothing more than to tease out its secrets. Though only a fragment, a very specific ritual had to be performed to impart the power of the Rune of Death. Traces of the one who performed the rite are sure to remain in the imprint. Half my body has been suffused with death. I'm certain it will help me see. mental fortitude. It anchors his will and sustains him. Despite his grievous wounds, you truly are a champion to dear Roger and myself too. Then good day to you, my dear.
Ah, hello. I was hoping to see you. My examination is complete. Here's the knife print back, with my thanks. Now I have a fairly good idea who performed the rite upon the blade. The person who orchestrated the Night of the Black Knives. Luna Princess Ronnie. One of the children born to King Consort Radigan and his first wife, Ronala. Demigod and sister to General Radan and Praetor Rikard. Hers was the name I discovered in the imprint. Truly, you have my thanks. But, if I might be so bold, I would like to ask something more of you. If Rani truly is the one who plotted that fateful night, then she should bear the curse mark of destined death somewhere upon her flesh. I would like you to procure it for me. And then, all will be laid bare. I will have the answers I have sought for so long. I have some idea of Rani's potential whereabouts. There's a manor to the north of the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. It is the familial home of the Karian royals from whom Rani descends. There's been talk of the old royals' vassals gathering there in recent years. Rani's whereabouts since the shattering are a well-kept secret. She hasn't been seen even once. But I suspect she might have returned to the manor in which she was born. I'm afraid there's something I must tell you. Do you know of those who live in death? The very notion of life in death defies the Golden Order. By Dee's account, these defiled fiends must be expunged. But truth be told, I seek the curse mark to save them. You may find this peculiar, but I discovered something in my examination of the Knight of the Black Knives. These souls have committed no offense. They have every right to life, only they happen to touch upon a flaw in the Order. Yes, indeed. If Dee knew what drives me now, he would surely boil over with rage. Or perhaps he would even feel some pity. But no need to fret. None of that will come to pass. I can tell a good lie when I need to. Ah, there you are. You claimed a great room? and had your audience with the two fingers at the round table home. What was your impression? Aha! Your intuition serves you well. My doubts had been piling up, you see. The words of the two fingers cannot be trusted. Truly, naught but rambling, senile delusions. I believe that when the Elden Ring was shattered, the two fingers were corrupted, their guidance skewed. Even worse, the fingers harbor no love for our kind. That's the part that irks the most. Oh, I have a gift for you, something fit only for the wise. <laughs> means for circumventing the draw of the two fingers. Give it a try, won't you? And if it please you, may we meet again. I've high hopes for you, my lambkin. Oh, lambkin, so pleased you're here. I'm glad that you're enjoying my gift. Hmm. I knew it from the very start. You have a taste for noble blood. <clears throat> I wish to anoint you a proper inductee. A knight to serve Luminary Moog, the Lord of Blood, and establish a new dynasty. Luminary Moog has strength, vision, and of course, love. So, what do you say? my lambkin. Hmm, yes. Who would have it any other way? Now, take this. For your final trial, soak the cloth with a maiden's blood. 
Normally, this ritual would involve killing one's own maiden and recanting the wisdom of the two fingers. But since you are maidenless, the blood of anyone's maiden will do. There's someone there. Would you donate any Shabriri grapes in your possession to me? I'm on a pilgrimage in search of the distant light. And when I eat one of those grapes, I can feel the light in the back of my eyes. You're not like the others who give me grapes, are you? They rest their trembling hands upon me. Howling wordlessly, they gently stroke my eyes. Their frail fingers, emaciated. Yet still, they give me the grapes, but you seem somehow firmer. You are most kind indeed. May the blessing of the fingers be upon you. Hello? There's someone there. Would you donate any Shabriri grapes in your possession to me? I'm on a pilgrimage in search of the distant light. And when I eat one of those grapes, I can feel the light in the back of my eyes. Oh, many thanks to you. Now I can feel the distant light once more. That aside, I wonder what Shabriri grapes really are. Delectably tender and sweet, yet searing. What a sight they must be to behold. <clears throat> no. That's not possible. Not all of those people. Their own... So those noises I heard were... Sorry. I'm all right now. Don't mind me. I apologize. You only did as I asked. I'll be fine. Think no more of it. <laughs> I've gleaned something very important indeed, thanks to you. The reason why it was eyes I had to eat. The distant light is far and frail, so faint it can't be seen by the naked eye. But with everyone's eyes together, it appears. Finally, it all makes sense. I'm certain now. I will be a finger maiden.
You're tarnished, aren't you? I welcome you to the Church of Vows. I am Muriel, steward of this sacred chamber. My apologies for the unseemly state of affairs. Do you know the origin of this place? How it came to be known as the Church of Vows? Well, that is a shame. But who can blame you? The shattering has caused us, all of us, to lose sight of something very dear. It is here, at the Church of Vows, that the great houses of the Earth Tree and the Moon were joined by the matrimonial bond between red-haired Radican and Renala of the Full Moon. And so our church holds in view the monuments of both houses, the Earth Tree of the Capitol and the Academy of Rea Lucaria. Oh, was there something you needed? You are free to show yourself around. I would serve as your guide, only my legs aren't what they used to be. If you find anything of use, you are free to take it with you. Unless, perhaps, you are in search of instruction, in which case I will share all that I know. You wish to know more of Lord Radigan. Lord Radigan was a great champion, possessed of flowing red locks. He came to these lands at the head of a great golden host. When he met Lady Renala in battle, he soon repented his territorial aggressions there and became husband to the Carian Queen. However, when Godfrey, first Elden Lord, was hounded from the lands between, Radigan left Renala to return to the Earth Tree capital, becoming Queen Marika's second husband and King Consort, taking the title of Second Elden Lord. The mystery endures to this day as to why Lord Radigan would cast Lady Renala aside, and moreover, why a mere champion would be chosen for the seat of Elden Lord. You wish to know more of Lady Renala? She is Queen, head of the Carian royal family, and governor of the Academy of Rea Lucaria, the great and beautiful Full Moon Witch. Sadly, her heart was broken when Lord Radigan left her, and then, when the Academy rebelled against the royals, she was locked away in the Grand Library. In the end, Lady Renala was left alone, cradling the amber egg Lord Radigan bequeathed her. Now she devotes herself to it through forbidden right, the grim art of reincarnation. You would do well to remember, severing a vow, strongest of bonds, has consequences ever more dire. You know, it's said that Lord Radigan harbored a secret. A famed sculptor of the Earth Tree capital was once summoned to render Lord Radigan's likeness in giant stature when he glimpsed the skeleton in Radigan's closet. And as such, it's said the great statue harbors his secret too. Thank you, kind soul, for learning my paltry sorceries. I never imagined that a Bluntstone like myself would have the chance to play teacher. Hello, Cos. What are you doing here? I didn't think anyone knew about this place. Except us jars. Ah. Are you going to be the new potentate? Truly, that's wonderful news. It's not easy being potentate, though. I know. Show me your hands. It's just a little test, cuz. To see if you've got the right stuff. Hmm. Your skin isn't so smooth, is it? You need 
slick, slidey hands to be potentate, you know? I'm sorry, cuz. But I don't think you've got what it takes. What a shame. Don't look so glum, cuz. We can still chat. Potentates or not, come back and visit me. When you can. Oh! Hello again, cuz. I'm happy you came back. I have good tidings for you, cuz. Have you noticed the rare flowers growing in this village? I asked the villagers if you could pick some of them, and they said you'd be very welcome. Go on, Kaz. You really should pick some of our flowers. Who knows? They might be of some use. Slaughtered. But alas, it was for naught. But all you need do is snatch it from the big pot. <laughs> Pretty the poor, poor fool. <laughs>
Thanks for your help there. That bloody finger was a thorn in my side. And now I'm finally rid of him. Here's a token of thanks. Please, take it. I may not have much time. I'm dying to see you. Eleonora. Violet Bloody Finger. Yes, I've been tracking Eleonora for quite some time. She is the deadliest of all Bloody Fingers. She's felled many an old hand already, but in spite of her cess-blood zealotry. Eleonora is a proud knight. If she comes for you, do not think twice. You must flee. There is no shame in self-preservation. Be on your way. Perhaps we will meet again. If fate permits. Little Calver. I'll soon birth thee anew, a sweeting, fresh and pure. My beloved, have no fear. I will hold thee. Patience. Ye will be countless born forever and My name is Rani the Witch. Mother's rich slumber shall not be disturbed by thee. Foul trespasser. Send word far and wide.
of the last queen of Caria, Renala of the full moon. And the majesty of the night she conjureth. Did he flee, my sweetings? Come out from whence ye hide. There are books and light aplenty, did there not? Come out, say I, or will ye be gravestones to be better born anew? Ah, thou, is it thy wish to be born anew? To become a sweeting, reborn of my beloved egg. Be not alarmed, nor afeard. I would birth thee as a sweeting, fair and fine. Back to learn another. Wonderful. You're most welcome to any of my anemic little spells. Oh, did I not mention I'm a bluntstone? I don't even have a pebble's worth of power, so I'm afraid I can't help you decipher the scroll. I'm sorry I'm so useless. I truly am. Are you certain? You're willing to give your glintstone key to me. My, oh my. Thank you. Thank you dearly. Now I can go back to the academy to resume my study of glintstone sorceries. And the very stars. <laughs> <laughs> Dearly, with your blessing, I will depart for the Academy of Freya Lucaria. Perhaps one day you will pay me a visit? Who knows? I may be a decorated sorcerer by then. <laughs> together. Look there. The fingers shudder with exuberance. Fine work, brave tarnished. The greater will is pleased. You have earned the right to become Elden Lord. Now, seek the Erd Tree and an audience with Queen Marika to become Elden Lord and restore the golden order. The fingers expect as much from you as they do, young Gideon. Take this, a token of farewell. Now, go forth. Become Elden Lord. Ah. You have returned. What is it? Queen Marika is the vessel of 
the Elden Ring, carrier of its vision. A god in truth. But after the Elden Ring's shattering, she was imprisoned in the Erd Tree. A grim punishment for shattering the Order. Despite her godhood, the fingers speak. Malika's trespass demanded a heavy sentence. But even in shackles, she remains a god and a vision's vessel. Confer great rules to become Elden Lord and join Queen Malika as her consort. The fingers have willed it so. Now you may go. Now go forth. Let the words of the fingers guide you. Well, I see you found another great room. Wonderful. You are a worthy fellow tarnished indeed. Make the journey to the capital, Landell, that lies to the east of the Altus Plateau, at the foot of the Erd Tree. The Two Fingers will deny your passage no longer. You may be our best hope. Find your way to the Elden Ring, for we are tarnished. And we must answer the call of grace. You appear to be doing well. Very good. Well then, would you like to learn an incantation? There's something I should mention to you as well. I'm thinking of leaving the Round Table Hold. Do you know of the noble Gold Mask? Though he was but a tarnished, living outside the lands between, he was a great scholar who foresaw the coming guidance of grace. And now, I hear he has come to the lands between alone to contemplate the Golden Order. I wish nothing more than to seek his instruction and perhaps even help him in his research. May the Golden Order shine through you. You... please... I can read them. Your fingers, please, your fingers. Oh, what a pity it is to be without the right. All you can do is stand at a loss without even the half crescents that wish to be whole. Unmoving, unfeeling grand lift ahead. Ah. <sighs> or are you planning to throw yourself to the waters? To find the coward's passage through the dim cavern? Oh, hello. Is that you over there? Have you ever heard of fingerprint grapes? They're special grapes which only grow on those who've been clasped by the burnt fingers. I would truly love to try one. The distant light seems far closer than before. But I can't sense a thing from the usual grapes anymore. Please, could you donate a fingerprint grape to me? Without one, I don't know. I feel like I might go mad.
Ah, my lambkin. You've completed your final trial. And with this, you are a formal inductee. A knight who will assist Luminary Moog, the Lord of Blood, in the establishment of a new dynasty. Now, give me your finger. This noble blood will be an immutable badge of honor once it settles inside of you. Oh, good heavens. Clench your teeth or something. Another thing. You should have this. A medal granted by the new Moguin dynasty. With the power to grant audience with Luminary Moog. I've gone out of my way to provide one to you. But you mustn't use it just yet. The meeting must wait until the Moguin dynasty commences. Luminary Moog yet slumbers beside the divinity. We must endure a little longer. Ah, it is trying, but we must be patient. One day you will be elevated, deservedly, basking in love. Right, my lambkin? <laughs> They're special grapes, which only grow on those who've been clasped by the brute fingers. Please, could you donate a fingerprint grape to me? Without one, I don't know. I feel like I might go mad. Oh. Oh. A fingerprint grape. Tried and true. What a wondrous thing. A fingerprint grape. <laughs> myself again. May the blessing of the fingers be upon you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I'm sure I'll be a finger maiden. Ah! Oh, hello again. Say, cuz, have you met Uncle Alexander? He used to live here with us, but then he left to be a champion. I asked to go with him, but he said, the path of champions must be trod alone. So heroic, right? I miss him, though. If you see him, you should ask him to teach you how to fight, cuz. He's big and tough and strong. Uncle Alexander said he won't be back again. My home is of the past. And the past, as they say, is a different country. I suppose that's part of being a warrior, isn't it? So, please don't tell anyone, cuz. But I'm actually a warrior jar as well. One day, I'll be just like Uncle Alexander. Then I'll have to leave the village to become a champion. Look it's me. I'm a warrior jaw too. <sighs> Greetings. Do you need anything? Oh, what have we here? Very well, let us both learn together. Heresy is not native to the world. It is but a contrivance. 
all things can be conjoined. Do you possess any celestial dew? Then I would like to share my knowledge with you. Concerning the miracle of this Church of Vows, Radigan once cleansed himself with celestial dew, repented his territorial aggressions, and swore his love to Renala. The Order of the Erdry and the fate of the Moon were conjoined, and all the wounds of war forgiven. This miracle blesses the Church to this day, and so you need only follow Radigan's example to restore any bond, however strained or severed, to its rightful state of harmony. To experience the miracle, kneel in the basin at the back and cleanse yourself with celestial dew. Absolution will be yours. Any bond, no matter how strained or even severed, will be put to rights. My faith does not waver. The miracle rooted in these grounds will once again mend the world. And this time, its bounty will not be squandered. If you would be Elden Lord, tarnished, I hope that you too will share my faith. at you. We don't receive many visitors. I presume you are uh, tarnished? What brings you here? Oh, pardon me. It's hardly my place to ask, is it? I am E.G. A blacksmith who once served the Carian royals. An old codger who refuses to retire his rusty hammer. So here I am, still quietly plying my trade on this spot. Perhaps you'd like a display? These bones are old, but still able. Oh, watch out there! When I'm absorbed in my smithing, I lose sight of all else. If you come too close, I'm apt to cause you harm. I am, after all. Terribly large compared to you, Tarnished. You don't know how hard it is not to break anything while I work. Brave Tarnished. A word of warning, if you please. This territory once belonged to the Carian royal family. Their manor lies not far beyond this point. When the Rhea Lucaria Academy turned on the Carians, the Knights of the Cuckoo descended on this tract. After leveling it, they carried on to the manor. The Carians were taken off guard, but their strength had not waned, and they repelled the Knights' onslaught by conjuring an enchanted snare that remains potent to this day. That is why I say, Tarnished, don't go near the manor unless you wish to lie with the corpses of the heedless knights of the Cuckoo. Blythe actually did that, did he? Quite a rare occurrence for such a guarded soul as he. Perhaps he sensed something unusual about you. 
At any rate, if you're friendly with Blythe, I've something else that might suit you. family. I am charged with maintaining these ghastly dogs. Ah, your worship, allow me to be of use. Other than the puppets, there are some very fine things up here in this storeroom. Why not pick something out before you go? But please, can you offer poor ill starred Pidia a little something by way of compensation? I believe I said my name was Renna when last we met. It pleaseth me to see Torrent hale and hearty, but tarnished. What business hast thou here? I have no memory of inking thee an invitation. I see. Quite the sleuth, aren't we? Indeed, I am the witch, Rani. I stole a fragment of the Rune of Death and used it to forge the godslaying black knives through fearsome rite. I did it all. But sadly for thee, the curse mark thou seekest is not to be found here. I have slain the body I was born into and cast it away. And it is upon that flesh the curse mark is carved. And why should I reveal that to thee? I performed the act not to bury the past, nor in shame of the deed. But all the same, thy begging compels me not a jot. The curse mark thou seekest is not here. That is all I will say. Now, be gone. Always good to see you safe. So, what do you need? I see. When Rani shed her flesh, she shed the curse mark, too. You know, not everyone would trust such a tale. But if she in her current form is nothing more than the living doll you profess, then perhaps it's true after all. Hmm. Forgive the bluntness of the notion, but how would you like to become one of Rani's vassals? Ah, only in order to get what we want, of course. The location of the body which bore the curse mark, which right now I haven't the faintest. And the best way to find out is for you to enter her service and take a poke around on the sly. I know you've got what it takes. Not only are you a superb fighter, but people want to trust you. I've seen it. The curse mark thou seekest is not here. That is all I will say. Now, be gone. Oh, is that so? Thou wouldst render me aid? Is that thy proposal? 
Affording thyself opportunity to grope about for the curse mark's location, no doubt. Hmm. Very well. There's nothing wrong with a well-laid scheme. What's more, if my past and past wounds beckon to thee, I am curious enough to see what thy destiny portends. I'll allow it. Enter my service, and good hunting to thee. Good. Then I ask we proceed with haste. There is, in my service, a half-woven warrior. By the name of Blythe, I would have thee join him in searching for the hidden treasure of Nokron, the Eternal City. I have called for Blythe to greet thee below. Take from him the particulars. Ah, and there wilt thou find E.G., my war counselor, and Salavis, preceptor in the sorcerous arts also. Heed not their peculiarities. Feel secure in gaining from them what advantage thou canst. I am sure the others will be doing just the same. Speak with the three who await thee below. Thou needst not indulge them unduly. But they too wish to appraise thy worth. It hath been a passing long time since a newcomer entered my service, after all. Oh, so you were the one. Lady Rani has explained everything. Again, I am Iji, the Karian royal family's dedicated blacksmith and Lady Rani's war counselor. I am told that you are searching for Nokron with Blythe. I will give you whatever guidance I can and pray for your success. My apologies for the misleading words of warning. I never imagined that an audience, let alone service to Lady Rani, was in your fate. I, for one, should have seen it, but I did not. Do forgive me, my fellow. Let us give all that we can of ourselves, together, for Lady Rani. Hmm. Long time, friend. Blythe. Have you forgotten? Glad to have you in the service of Mistress Rani. Well, getting right to business. I'm still in Limgrave. The eternal city of Nokron lies somewhere at the bottom of this land. I'm planning to go below through the well in the Mistwood. See if I can't find the road to Nokron from there. I see. You must be Rani's new hireling. Yes, yes, I've heard all about you. I am Selavis, preceptor in the sorcerous arts. I don't know what it is the mistress sees in a provincial tarnished like you, but since we have the misfortune of serving the same lady, I ask that you kindly try not to drag us all down with you. I reside in another tower close by. Come and pay me a visit. Should you wish to be of actual service to Mistress Rani, if it were up to me, I wouldn't waste my time on the likes of you. But who am I to stand against the wishes of my lady? Ah, allow me to forewarn thee. I shall soon enter my slumber, and it will be some time before I wake. This doll's body is not without its hindrances. Still, I have high hopes for thee. I look forward to the good news when I arise. Always good to see you safe. So, what do you need? Hmm. Maybe I should tell you. Lately, I feel I'm on the precipice of falling into a deep, fathomless slumber. 
and I have an inkling it could spell trouble for you somehow. So I just wanted to get the apology out of the way beforehand, since you're so scary and all. Well, well, you took me at my word. Did you not realize I was merely being polite? Oh, you provincials never cease to amaze. Uh, I suppose you're here now. Perhaps I'll give you something to do. I'd like you to find a woman called Nefeli to administer a potion. Even you can do that much, can't you? Good, good. Now I shall hand over the potion in question. Find Nefeli and ensure she drinks it. I expect glad tidings, and soon. I've no time for idle chit-chat. The only thing I will hear from you is a report of your task's completion. Are we understood? Then off you trot. I have enough on my plate. Oh, it's you. Well, what do you make of it? What's happened to this village? I witnessed a sight much the same in my infancy. The oppression of the weak. Murder and pillage unchecked. A waking nightmare made by men. But this time, I'm a woman grown. And though the suffering cannot be undone, I can still mete out justice. Justice to the oppressors. Let the scars I carve remind them. I am Nefeli Lu, warrior. Please, leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but I... I need to think. Journey to the capital, Lane Dell. To the east of the Altus Plateau, at the foot of the Erd Tree. The Two Fingers will deny your passage no longer. You may be our best hope. Find your way to the Elden Ring. You've already heard. Indeed, it seemed the whelp harbored suspicions, so I had no further use for her. Honestly, what a man to do. A determined plebeian is more wicked than an omen horn, quite frankly. I suspect that's just what the Queen wants. A dose of ambition to incite the tarnished. Ah, you. Please, leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but I... I need to think. So you know already, do you? Right. It's true. My father cast me out for indulging my emotions. Forgetting the mission. Punishment for offing his pawns. Father... Mother. Lord Gideon has offered me guidance all my life. I would have done anything for him. 
to place him on the throne of Elden Lord. And yet I... Though it was not my intent, I betrayed him. And I... can no longer trust him father. To think he'd order his men to enact such tragedy. Where is the justice he purports in that? He once told me that if he became Elden Lord, he would never allow the downtrodden to be cheated ever again. Was he simply lying to me? No, no, no. How could I say that? Father has always given me his guidance. And now... I've lost it. Is that portion what I think it is? Bloody Salavis. I suppose he's up to something again. Oh, I won't interfere. You can go ahead and do what you must. The round table has no code to speak of. But... I ask you this. Are you really going to do the bidding of that twisted dolly botherer? Or... Would you rather hand that potion to me? And see if we can't get one over on the bastard? Good. I'll dispose of the potion myself. You go and see Selenus, but don't give anything away. Just tell him that you tricked your mark into drinking the potion, as planned. Despite knowing next to bloody nothing, he's so far up his own arse he won't suspect a thing. His inevitable display of arrogance will certainly be a sight to behold. Ah, so you made Nefeli drink the potion. Well done. You are a touch more useful than I had thought. Very well. Then you shall have your gift. Knowledge of the sorcerous arts and of the tutelage of the great preceptor Selavis. I doubt much of it will lay within the grasp of a mere tarnished, but if you put your mind to it, perhaps you won't embarrass our lady. You wish to begin right this moment? Well, your impatience, though boorish, is understandable. Let's have at it. So, you had Nefeli drink the potion? Truly? Hmm. Then perhaps something was amiss with it. It's concocted from the finest ingredients, but perhaps I should review the recipe. I may have expected too much of her to begin with. Begging for another lesson so soon? Ugh, there remains much to be done. Make it quick. You break into a man's private chambers, rooting about as you please. Your oafishness knows no bounds. Fine and well. You tricked Nefeli and had her drink the potion. I believe that makes you my accomplice. You yearn for a puppet of your own, hmm? Well, normally one of your stature would never be allowed. But perhaps I can make a very special exception. Now, tubes. Secrets lie with me, not a one. Oh, please leave me be. Wait then. You're not one of them. Well, what a relief. <laughs> oh, goodness me. 
I am Albus and Alvinoric. As you can see, we're finished. The whole village is finished. The curse mongers have destroyed everything. No one that remains has their wits about them. I beg you. Would you look after this medallion? You must keep it out of the Cursemonger's hands. And if you should need the young Albinorek Latena, then please give it to her. A chosen land awaits us, Albinoreks. The medallion is the key that leads to the city. It's only a quaint treasure for we who cannot make the journey. But for dear Latena, it is needed to fulfill her purpose. My legs will soon fade, and with them my life. Alas, this is the immovable fate of all Albinorex. <laughs> Journey to the capital, Landell, to the east of the Altus Plateau, at the foot of the Erd Tree. The Two Fingers will deny your passage no longer. You may be our best hope. Find your way to the Elden Ring. Oh, my apologies for that nasty business. Encher got rather ahead of himself, it seems. As his master, I'd like to express my regret. But now, Ensha is slain and gone. Finished. Forevermore. Ah, yes. By way of apology, allow me to tender some advice in regard to the half of the secret medallion you possess. Find the Albinoric woman. She hides in a cave to the west of the Laskia ruins, which jut from the mist-shrouded lake of Leonia. She knows the location of the medallion's counterpart, I'm sure. Fell tarnished. What do you want? I told the all hearing brute that I possess no such medallion. Or have you come to take more from me? Was my other half not enough? Do you speak true? So old Albus entrusted his medallion to you. <sighs> then I have no choice but to trust that this was his dying will. Let's try again. I'm Latena, an Albanoric, the same as old Albus. My apologies for my coarse words earlier. I presume the worst. Seeing that you're another tarnished like that all-hearing brute, I hope that you will forgive me. Hmm. The medallion's better off in your hands anyway. Would you consider doing me a great service? I must go back. There is something I must do. Even if I must say farewell to my wolf, Lobo. Will you show me the way? To the land of Mikola's halo tree. If you accept, I would gladly apprise you of the whereabouts of the medallion's other half. Thank you kindly. They say the other half of the medallion is beyond the Forbidden Lands, north of the Erd Tree, in Castle Sol, on the mountain tops of the Giants, accessible by the Grand Lift of Rold. 
Then I suppose it's time. Farewell, Lobo. My faithful wolf. My better half. I will go with the tarnished. So that our journey will not have been in vain. Forgive me, Lobo. Call upon me when needed, and I will fight at your side. No, no, no. How could I say that? Father has always given me his guidance. And now... I've lost it. Is that ash? I can smell the ancient storm in it. My thanks. I'll gladly take it. I'm... not like Roderica. I don't feel the presence of spirits, let alone see them. Still, this ash, it reminds me of my first hawk. Thank you. How's the puppet I gave you? A thing of exquisite craft, is it not? What's that? You want another puppet? Quite the keen paramour, aren't we? But I'm afraid each and every one is like a child to me. I can hardly just give them away. Oh dear, what's to be done? Why don't you fetch me some starlight shards? If you can manage it, I'll gladly prepare a new puppet for you. The soul of every puppet has its own ambience. You'll soon come to know, once you possess a few. And once each's predilections are known to you, the better you'll be able to love them. Oh yes, you have much to look forward to further down this road. You're proving to be quite the puppeteer. I've not had an apprentice for a very long time indeed. Begging for another lesson so soon? Ugh, there remains much to be done. Make it quick. Perhaps you'll be interested in a little scheme of mine. It will produce the finest of puppets which I aspire to cherish with these very hands. A ploy to fool even Lady Raleigh. How does that sound? Very good. A wise choice, indeed. You passed my little test with flying colors. I was merely gauging your loyalty to Lady Raleigh. Well done. I'm very proud of you. Let's both do our utmost in service of Our Lady. Ah, might you be interested, after all, in a fine scheme to sport with Lady Rani? All right, enough of these games. Your test is well and truly over. Wag your tail for master all you like, but your loyalty is merely blind. I fear your wretched provinciality is apt to burst. You're oozing at the seams. Well, my fellow, how may I serve you? As war counselor? Or as blacksmith. I take it you've heard of the eternal city of Noxtella. Well, it has a twin, known as Nokron, the other eternal city. After years of expeditions, we've determined the location of Nokron by going underground through the well in the mistwood of Lingrave. You can see Nokron. Up above, only we failed to find a path leading to the city. 
Blythe's made a good go of it, but I'm afraid this has him quite stumped. To be honest, I'm not sure where to go from here. Blythe is Lady Rani's stepbrother. Rani's mother, Queen Renala, approved of him, and they played like siblings from childhood. They were always happy to have me tag along as well. When Lady Rani renounced her flesh and chose the dark path of the Empyrean, Blythe and I swore allegiance as vassals. But none of us will ever forget our earliest days together. Promise to look after Blythe for me, will you? The man is honest to a fault. But fortunately, now he has you. Good to see you. Apologies, mate, but I don't have much to report. I can see bloody Nokron right above me, but I'm absolutely stumped. I've tried all the gateways, to no avail. Perhaps it's time to ask Celebus. I recall that spiteful little rat acting like he knew something. Let's give him a squeeze. Show him just how sharp my teeth are. I jest. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Besides, uh, I should check on some things here. Leave this place to me. You just do what you feel is right. If either of us learns anything, we tell the other. Right? Ah, a fine day to your worship. Please. Choose whatever you like. Find it in your heart. Forgive me. Begging for another lesson so soon? Ugh, there remains much to be done. Make it quick. Well, well. You're asking me about that, are you? The task was left to you and the mongrel, was it not? Not only are you incompetent, but shameless to boot. Well, there's no helping it. Now's as good a time as any. I'll let you in on it. There's a glintstone sorcerer by the name of Selen in Limgrave. She owes me for the help I gave her when she was expelled from the Academy. I asked her to look into the matter some time ago. I'll write you a letter of introduction. Go ask her. <laughs> Are we? 
I wonder you should turn up here. I am Salen, a sorcerer, quite plainly. Why are you here? Ah, a yen for glintstone sorceries. Well, your aptitude does appear... passable. But one must choose one's masters wisely. I was exiled from the Academy of Rea Lucaria. As a reviled, apostate witch. Do you still wish to learn from me? <laughs> well, you are a piece of work. Very well. You are now my protege in Glinstone sorcery. But I refuse to coddle. Or cast kind words. Never. Anticipate grievances, young apprentice. Well, well. Celibus is not a name I ever wanted to hear again. But fine. If it will help you, my apprentice. I offer my knowledge. The stars alter the fate of the Karian royal family. And the fate of your mistress, Rani. But long ago, General Radan challenged the swirling constellations. And in a crushing victory, arrested their cycles. Now he is the force that repulses the stars. If General Radan were to die, the stars would resume their movement. And so too would Rani's destiny. Ah, well met. What news? Hmm. So Rani's fate is kept in stasis by Stars Girls Radan. That reminds me of something I heard. There's a festival being held at the castle on the southern edge of the Caled Wilds, east of Limgrave. It's a festival of combat. And I heard that you can fight Radan himself. He who was once called the strongest of all the demigods. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but I think it's worth investigating. I'll be on my way to this festival of Radan then. You're coming too, right? To Radan's festivities. I'll meet you at Redmain Castle in Caled. The way ahead is pleasingly simple. We fight, sword and fan. Again. Do you know what a poacher is, cuz? They hunt us, smash us, and then take us away. This village is kept secret, so I think we're safe here. But you should be careful if you ever meet one of them, cuz. I hope Uncle Alexander beats them all up first. Alexander beats them all up. Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? I feel like I'm really coming to grips with spirit tuning of late. I can see how and why immortal essence exists. A spirit under the golden order. I can understand their yearnings. What they become drawn to. Master Hugh said it himself, actually. That I'm no mere apprentice any longer. Once again, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Moderica, the certified spirit tuner. Well, where have you been hiding? I took you for dead. No matter, it's all the same. Lay out your arms, then. The girl has come a long way. As ever, time and technique have made her stronger. Tis good to see. 
An imprisoned monster does not deserve an apprentice or a daughter. But at times, that's precisely what she feels like to me. I've gone soft. And it isn't easy. your face again. Are you heading to the Festival of Combat too? Oh, no need to be coy with me. Judging by the fine wallop you gave the old backside earlier, I would venture you're something of a warrior yourself. The mere thought of such a festival gets the blood pumping, eh? Now, according to my calculations, passing through this road should lead us to the Caled Wilds. But, however you slice it, it seems we've reached a dead end. I'm sorry to have raised your hopes. It seems my calculations must have been off. I was created to be a warrior vessel. Many great warriors reside within me, ever dreaming of becoming a great champion. It's my destiny. And the reason for which I quest, it is my ordeal, you could say. To test myself, to better myself, to fell ever greater foes. And then, one day, we'll be a single great champion. The greatest of them all. What do you think, eh? How do you rate my chances? <laughs> Sir, where did you spring from? This was supposed to be a dead end, I'm sure of it. What's going on here? A door from thin air. Well, stranger things happen at sea, or so I'm told. But onward to the Caled Wilds. I suppose my calculations were right all along. <laughs> you should head this way as well, friend. <laughs> it's time I set off. To the festival at Redmain Castle on the southern edge of the scarlet rot blighted Kaled Wilds. Doesn't the thought just set your heart a flutter? You. Please. I can read them. Your fingers. Please, your fingers. Ta 
honest, are you? How did you slip inside with the gate closed? Hmm. No matter. If you can fell one of them, you're a champion in my book. I am Jaren. Foolish old warrior and witness. Incidentally, do you like a good festival from time to time? Well, it's true. This fortress houses only the vanquished. But when the stars align, we celebrate. A war festival honoring the last battle and death of General Radan, the mightiest demigod of the Shattering and bearer of a great rune. Well, good. As you should. The festival affords glory to warriors. Then all you need is a little patience. When the stars align, the festival will be declared. Well, I haven't heard that name in an age. Then you must serve Princess Rani. The next time you speak to E.G., tell him this. The festival of Radan will surely set Rani's fate back into motion. By the by, is that old fool still hammering out weapons? <laughs> His enormous frame cramped in that little place. Bit of a haughty sort. Strange fella when I knew him. And funny thing, his swords were all blood to stone. But not one of them decayed when faced with a scarlet rot. Well, my fellow, how may I serve you? As war counselor? Or as blacksmith. Jaren. Now that's a name I haven't heard for a while. Before taking up the banner of General Radan, he was a guest of the Karian royal family. An expert swordsman, to be sure. But ever eccentric. No surprise he'd get wrapped up in some festival. Who oh, no. Wait. How did I not see it before? I ought to retire as war counselor for such a gross oversight. Let me explain. The fate of the Karian royal family is guided by the stars, as is the fate of Lady Rani, first heir in the Karian royal line. But General Radan is the conqueror of the stars, who stood up to the swirling constellations halting their movement in a smashing victory. And so, if General Radan were defeated, the stars would once again resume their movement, as would Lady Rani's destiny, perhaps even revealing the elusive path that leads to Nokron. Pleasure to see you. A pleasure indeed. I am Gauri, a great sage. In my day, anyway. I'd hoped to ask a favor when one of your ilk came along. A strapping young tarnished, able to cross the scarlet swamp of Aeonia. Don't fret. I'll provide fine recompense. Should you accept, I will teach you the secret of Celia, the town you see there. Then you are willing to lend a hand, are you? I need your help to heal a certain young girl. Her name is Millicent. You will find her beyond Celia, resting at the church atop the cliff, stricken by the rotting sickness. The rotting sickness that afflicts Millicent has no cure. When the Erd Tree flourished, even the demigods could not stave off its effects, despite their nigh godhood. But Millicent's suffering can be ameliorated. For this, you are to find a certain needle, 
Seek the deep scarlet swamp of Aeonia outside Celia's bounds. The needle made from unalloyed gold is lost somewhere there. The secret of Celia right here. Go on. It's yours. Now let me have a look at the needle. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well, this is a marvel indeed. The work of a true artisan. A meticulous, bold craftsman who grasps the essence of life. Can you give me some time with this? As well made as it is, it won't be much use snapped in half, will it? I have awaited your return. The needle is repaired. Now it will forestall the rotting sickness, I'm sure. Will you give it to the girl, Millicent? I will reward you in kind. Millicent rests at the church atop the cliff beyond Celia, the town yonder, tended to by the witless pests who worship her, or rather her rotting sickness, as a god. A wretched fate, indeed. The poor girl, she never wished for any of this. Do you find it peculiar that I would show such concern for the girl? Well, I'm the one that found her. A mere babe in the swamp of Aeonia. She is one of my dear daughters. But the rotting sickness erodes one's memory. I doubt that she remembers the first thing about me. Oh, I must be getting old. I didn't always worry so much. <laughs> Who's there? Well, it matters not. If you are wise, you will leave immediately. My flesh writhes with scarlet rot. It is a curse. Not to be meddled with by man. You ask that I stab myself with the needle to quell the scarlet rot. But how? Never mind. I've decided I would rather trust you than simply continue to spoil from within. Would you mind averting your eyes for a moment? Well, that was easier than expected. But why do I feel so... Thank you kindly for giving the needle to Millicent. Now she too can begin her journey and stare her fate straight in the eye. You've been a saint through and through. 
As thanks, I vow to impart to you my knowledge of the lost sorceries of the Selians, descendants of the Eternal. I hoped to see you again. My apologies for when last we met. I fainted before I could even thank you. Everything is as you said. Since inserting the needle, the scarlet rot has ceased to writhe. Even the nightmares have abated. And now, though I can scarcely believe it myself, I can move as I please. Not that I could ever truly repay you, but I would like you to have this, by way of thanks. A token though it is. I'm considering leaving on a journey with the needle buried in my flesh. I've started to recall, but dimly, my destiny. It's all thanks to you. My name is Millicent. I pray fate permits us meet again. Oh, hello again. Something about this place felt familiar to me, so I decided to pay a visit, hoping to find someone here, but I've only found emptiness. Perhaps before my departure, I needed someone to say farewell to. Well, never mind that. I must focus on my journey, for which I have you to thank. I must stay strong. Please make certain that little Millicent goes unharmed. Like her mother, she has the stuff to be a great warrior, but commands only one arm and is yet preciously young. Oh, you noticed, did you? Indeed, Millicent did visit this hovel of a home. It seems the memories eaten away by the rotting sickness yet remain, but faintly. However, she has no need of me anymore. No, she must embark on her journey and stare her fate in the eye. I mustn't impede. As I've aged, I've found the best way to aid the young is to be forgotten. awaits you. Champions, prepare for battle. Defeat the general, claim glory, and grab that great rune. A celebration of war. The Radan Festival! are all made up. I'm waiting for the curtain. Let's give them a show to remember, eh? Just don't you go dying on me. For Rani's sake, too. Once more into the fray together, eh? <laughs> this might even be fun. Ah! You came! 
How delightful. Indeed, I thought I might find you here. By the by, do you know for whom this festival is being held? Well, it is none other than General Radan himself. To think, I could face a great champion of the Shattering. A demigod in the flesh. Oh, in truth, I quiver at the thought. Such is his frightful repute. But the fear simply assures me the ordeal is worth undertaking. Be sure to get a good vantage, my friend. I, Iron Fist Alexander, do hereby vow to unflinchingly brave this ordeal. Are you good and prepared, young chum? The festival begins. Before we begin, allow me to paint you the full picture. General Radan is cursed ever to wander. Eaten from the inside by Melania's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. Now he gathers the corpses of former friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog. Howling at the sky. But now, we must make merry. Oh, gathering of champions! The revels begin! The celebration of war! The Radan Festival! <laughs> You will find the field of battle past the church ahead, upon the shore under the fort. General Radan is there, even now, divested of his wits, devouring corpses, and howling at the sky.
Ah, good. I was waiting for you. Oh, what a sick way to fight, eh? The glory of the clash is shared. By Radan. And you. And <laughs> did you see that afterwards? Falling star right before our eyes. I can't fathom how Radan was holding back something of that scale. He was a living legend if ever I saw one. And the path has now been cleared. To Nokra. Where Rani's fate will be decided. Let's meet where the falling star bit the earth. We'll take up our souls once more. For Mistress Rani. Let's meet where the falling star bit the earth. And we'll go into battle again. Side by side. My only purpose is to fight for Rani's fate. Sword and fang. The curtains rising. On the final act. Ah, hello there. Um, it was a battle marvelously fought. You are well and truly a champion, friend. I, on the other hand, am nothing but a croc. One hit was all it took to crack me, and for my insides to come spilling out. After that, I... I hid like a coward. And as such, I can hardly stand to face one such as you. But don't you think I've given up just yet? As luck would have it, there's a veritable mountain of warriors' bodies right here. If I can just squeeze this bunch down inside me, I'll be a mighty warrior again in no time. And you know, the bodies found here are exceedingly fine. Who could expect any less from the very warriors who fought in the Shattering? The greatest of all wars. Mm. Just you wait and see, friend. I'll grow even stronger. Just you wait when next we meet. <laughs> At last, the war festival has ended. Brave champion, you have our gratitude. The celebration was spectacular. General Radan is surely pleased. Festering with rot and crippled by madness, all he wanted was an honorable death. Finally, my work is done. I'm no longer bound to this fortress. I have a task in mind. Old business, you could say. You wouldn't understand. May we meet again, if the fates deign it. Brave champion. told me everything. You've defeated General Radan, unlocking the stars. The General was blighted by Scarlet Rot and driven to madness. But not long ago, he was hailed as the mightiest demigod of them all. There is no parallel to your achievement, nor to Lady Rani's acute judgment of character. Thanks to you, Lady Rani's fate once again stirs and the path to Nokron has opened. Descend underground where the fallen star struck Limgrave and make it yours. The precious treasure of Nokron. Now the festival is over and General Radan is defeated, Jeren's duties are finally fulfilled. Though we served different masters, I could see he was truly adept in his role. Now the time has come to remind him of an old promise made. 
With the stars of fate set into motion, a certain sorceress is dispossessed of her immortality. Finally, we can be rid of a long-standing Carrion weed. Or, Blythe wanted me to tell you not to bother waiting for him and head straight to Nokron. Blythe has been given an important task. Apparently, a matter of great urgency. Oh, it's you. It's me, Blythe. Old E.G. trapped me here. Told me I'd bring north but failed to Lady Rani. But there's no chance that could happen. I'm part of her being. A very shadow. I thought old E.G. knew as much. Honestly. I don't know what's going on anymore. My thanks, friend. I'm going to see Mistress Rani now. I don't know what came over old E.G. But even if the odds are slim, I need to check the mistress is safe. Now, Rani can finally set in motion the fight against her fate she's dreamt of for so long. Well, my fellow, how may I serve you? As war counselor or as blacksmith? I presume you've spoken with Blythe? Very well. There is something you should know. The two fingers gave Blythe to Lady Rani as a faithful follower. Her very shadow, incapable of treachery. But if Lady Rani, as an Empyrean, resists being an instrument of the two fingers, the shadow will go mad. Transforming from a follower into a horrid curse. But such is his destiny. In such matters, Blythe's own thoughts hold no weight. It pains me so. But he must be neutralized. For Lady Rani's sake. It was thee, not Blythe, it seemeth. Even in my slumber I sensed it. It is in thy possession, is it not? The hidden treasure of Nokron. My thanks. Finally all the pieces are in place. Soon must I begin my journey. Upon the dark path only I may tread. Ah, but before I leave, I must entrust thee with this. Take it. My discarded flesh lieth beyond the seal unlocked by it, upon which is carved the curse mark of thy desire. I can fathom what thy purpose might be. Neither of us is welcomed by the brighter path. I see. You may leave now. It was but brief. But thou gavest me fine service.
hurt her. Please, I beg you, cease this cruelty. drop by. Have you heard? Lady Rani has departed on her journey along the dark path of Empyrean from Rena's rise, as she calls it. It would not have been possible without you. As Lady Rani's war counselor and, moreover, her childhood warden, I express my deepest gratitude. You, and only you, were Lady Rani's true champion. My purpose is nearing its end. I've served Lady Rani for as long as I can remember. It has been a long and wondrous journey. Now Lady Rani is in your hands. I pray that you serve her well, and to the very end. it is to see a friendly face. As you can surmise, I've got myself stuck in another hole. Would you mind helping me out again? My thanks in advance. I know you're the man for the job. You know what to do, hmm? Give me a good smack from behind with something nice and big. No, don't worry about my wound sustained at the festival. I'm stuck back together good and proper. <laughs> Just give it your all. Wait, I have a terrible feeling about this. Would you stop hitting me for a minute? Now, I can feel my lower half is stuck on something. I don't think you can get me out just by hitting me this time. Hmm. Let's think. Perhaps there's a way to slide me out a little more smoothly. Now, what if I could somehow be made slippery or some such? My thanks to you and your razor-sharp wits. Oh. As a token of my thanks, I'd like you to have this. Oh. Deary me, I'm oilier than a toad. <laughs> you know, there were countless oil jars back where I'm from, actually. And now I know what it's like to be one of them. <laughs> Yes, indeed. I too have a home. Though it is one to which I have vowed not to return. So, I thought I might look out from atop the cliff. But as I drew closer and closer, pow, wouldn't you know it, I was perfectly stuck in that blasted hole. I can feel the warriors inside admonishing me for my mawkishness. To walk the path of champions, one cannot cleave to the past. I'm headed to the Fiery Mount in the north. I can strengthen myself there without fear of cracking this vessel. I will forge myself anew in its flames.
Oh, a dogged fellow, aren't we? Or is it merely thy habit to talk to dolls? Fine. Fine. I hadn't expected any soul to recognize me in this guise. But now the cat is out the bag. I cannot allow thee thy freedoms. Perform for me a service as recompense. Eliminate the baleful shadows which prowl these lands. The name of Rani the Witch is already sullied by thee. I will not brook disobedience in this matter. Let us speak of the past a while. I was once an Empyrean, of the demigods. Only I, Mikola, and Melania could claim that title. Each of us was chosen by our own two fingers, as a candidate to succeed Queen Marika, to become the new god of the coming age, which is when I received Blythe, in the form of a vassal tailored for an Empyrean. But I would not acquiesce to the two fingers. I stole the rune of death, slew mine own Empyrean flesh, casting it away. I would not be controlled by that thing. The two fingers and I have been cursing each other ever since, and the baleful shadows are their assassins. than I envisioned. Now I can finally stand before them. This is farewell, my dear. Tell Blythe and E.G. I love them.
So it was thee who would become my lord. Perhaps I needn't have warned thee. I am pleased, however. Thou art a fitting choice. I go now to the night sky. It is there I shall find mine order. I bid thee travel the path of the Lord, and once all is done, we shall see each other once more. my fellow. How can I help? Unthinkable. How could Blythe? How did he break free from his cell? No. More importantly, Blythe became a curse that plagued Lady Rani, yet even in madness, gave himself to her. I made a grave misjudgment. And I thought myself a capable war counselor. I'll catch up with you soon enough, Blythe. When I do, I only hope you'll accept my apology. Your seamster, Bok, he is always eager to see your return. Please, will you talk to him when you can? I'm sure he would be much contented. Bok the seamster, at your service, master. Ready to make adjustments to your garments. Master, my apologies. Your wardrobe includes the garb of the old demigods, and I'm afraid I can't make adjustments to them. <laughs> my mum told me once that a royal seamster would do them up in a jiffy. Just wait, Master. Before long, I'll be that good too. Is that a gift for my undeserving self? Thank you kindly. But what on earth could it... Oh, what amazing. I've never seen a golden needle. 
Not in all my life. With a spectacular royal crest to boot, are you certain that this is for me? Oh, I can hardly believe it. Have faith in me, Master. I'll polish my craft enough that I deserve this golden gift. I'll be the golden seamster, Bok. Now I'll be able to sew anything. Even the threads of the demigods. Do you think that Mum would be pleased if she knew that I'm as good as any royal seamster now? Oh, it's still not enough. I need to learn how to sew from scratch like her. Oh, going so soon? Uh, please do be safe on your journeys. You... Please, I can read them. Your fingers, please, your fingers. Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? In Marika's own words, the Earth Tree governs all. The choice is thine. Become one with the Order, or divest thyself of it. To wallow at the fringes, a powerless upstart.
The Erd Tree is close, only a little further till the foot of the Erd Tree. And the accord is fulfilled. It takes me back. I was born at the foot of the Erd Tree, where Mother gave me my purpose. Though now, everything is lost to me. I have to ascertain for myself the reason for which I live, burned and bodiless. Ah, we meet again. In truth, it's been smooth sailing for me. The Scarlet Rot has stilled since last we met. As such, I've been able to continue my journey. Though rather vexingly, I realized that if I still had my sword arm, I could have aided you in battle. Now I'm tracing the path Melania took after unleashing the power of the Scarlet Rot during her battle with General Radan in the Caled Wilds. I should like to meet her. This vanished woman. I think she's in the north, in the lands that lie beyond the Erd Tree. Ah, I have been waiting for your return. I've decided to leave the Round Table Hold after all. As I mentioned, I'm off in search of the Noble Gold Mask. We may not meet again for some time. If there's any incantations you wish to learn, now's the moment. May the Golden Order shine through you. Seamster. Bok. I see him crying. From time to time. I think he misses his mother. He wants someone to tell him he's beautiful. Does being born of a mother mean one behaves in such a manner? Bok the Seamster, at your service, Master. Ready to make adjustments to your garments. Master, may I ask you something? Would you mind if I called you Lord? I heard that you and the other Tarnished seek the throne of the Elden Lord. Well, I know that you will be the one, and you'd make just the manner of kind-hearted Lord that I'd wish for. So please, if you would, allow me to call you Lord. You don't say. Thank you. Thank you. My lord, my lord, my lord. Please become Elden Lord. And please let I, Bok the Seamster, remain at your side. Going already, my lord. Please do be safe on your journeys. Look who we have here. How delightful to meet a familiar face, even after departing the round table hold. I've been doing some learning of my own since then, actually, and will happily pass it along to you. I'm yet to find the noble gold mask. I suppose he'll be closer to the Erd Tree. The path ahead might be perilous, but tread it I shall. Since departing the round table hold, I've come to understand in my solitude, how little it is I truly know. May the Golden Order shine through you. Eleonora. It seems I am no match for you, but I've learned a thing or two myself. You see, I've sliced the finger off. Please. Please. 
Anora. Yield to the cesspool no longer. Do not stain the immaculacy of your soul. Your flesh. Your fire. appear to be doing well. Very good. Well then, would you like to learn an incantation? Do... do you sport with me? From your description, it can be no other than the gold mask himself. Of course, of course, I knew he would be close by. Bless the golden order and its benevolent rays. And to you too, my sincerest thanks. May the Golden Order shine through you. Ah, we meet yet again. Thanks to you, I have become acquainted with the noble Gold Mask himself, and taken my place by his side, as you can see. Have no fear. I will still teach you incantations as before, though we must do so quietly such that we not disturb the great master's cogitation. The master is always deep in contemplation, while I frantically attempt to record his wisdom, the movement of his finger, and though I am yet to comprehend even the daintiest morsel of his wisdom, I know that this, this is my life's calling. The golden order has bestowed me talentless as I am, the great duty of documentarian. May the golden order shine through you. Giving me this arm. 
Thank you. I am in your debt yet again. I think. If the arm serves well enough, it might be possible for me to wield a sword again. Ah, welcome, welcome. How may I help? So, you gave Millicent a golden arm replacement. This is a wonderful development. Thank you for your kindness. Now, Millicent may fully realize her true warrior's potential. Like her beautiful mother. The girl, Millicent, she is a bird. Green and undeveloped, waiting to flower into magnificence. What a wondrous day that will be. In truth, before her, I've never seen a bud of such superior quality. She might very well outshine her sisters. Do you have an interest in rot incantations? Then you might like to learn something of the history of Melania, goddess of scarlet rot. Queen Marika and her king consort Radigan were blessed with twin demigods, and Melania was one of them. She was born an Empyrean carrying the Scarlet Rod. An Empyrean is no mere demigod. In the age of the Elden Ring and Queen Marika, the precious Empyrean was born, a new god to forge a new order. Since Melania fought Radan, and the great scarlet flower blossomed in Aeonia, I have dedicated myself to her, and to the resplendence of the Order of Rot, the cycle of decay and rebirth. just like my own. Even handling a sword. Perhaps it is foolish to say this to you of all people, but I am sure of my skill with the sword. Thus, I would have you call upon me in battle again, should you ever have the need. Of you. 
Could you please find the owner of this dagger and return it to them? A certain person gave it to me as a gift. It's a very precious thing. It must have a special place in the owner's heart. So I would like for the original owner to have it back, if you wouldn't mind. Then good day to you, my dear. Turn it to them for you. Good work bringing this to me. Finally, it is returned to its rightful place the stolen Hallobrand of the exalted noble. And now, I must bid you goodbye as well. So I ask you deliver this message to the round table hold. I am Via. Deathbed companion. Hark round table. Disturb not the death of Godwin, the exalted. We who humbly live in death, live in waiting. To one day welcome our Lord. What right does anyone have to object? Our Lord will rise, the Lord of the many and the meek.
humiliation. Oh, my poor sweet lordling should have died a true death. As the first of the demigods to die. As a martyr to destined death. But why must it yet bring such disgrace? A scion of the Golden Bough. Sentenced to live in death. How could such a thing come to be? What is it you intend? To deny us and our ways, like the dogmatic brutes of the Golden Order? You are an odd one. I am the guardian of those who live in death. They call me a foul and rotten witch. Yet you still wish to be held by me? was marked with the half-wheel wound of the centipede. Godwin's Hallowbrand has since been recovered at the Round Table Hold. But there is another Hallowbrand out there somewhere, and I must find it before the time comes we receive our Lord. When Godwin died, a Hallowbrand scored his flesh, but another exists. Another mark in the shape of the half-wheel wound of the centipede. And I must find it. Before the time comes we receive our Lord. My hands will be dirtied once more by the deed. Will you still let me hold you? Even then? This is the other Hallowbrand. How did you... Oh, my utmost thanks. With this... Godwin can take his rightful place as first of the dead. 
and claim a second, illustrious life. You are my, our, true champion. And though I can't be of any use to you, can I hold you tight? If only for a moment. soon lay with Godwin, and it will surely stir within me. The new life of the Golden Prince, and first dead of the demigods, as the ruin of those who live in death. Please, do one thing for me. Brandish this child, my rune, and take for yourself the throne. Stay the persecution of those who live in death by becoming our Elden Lord. This is goodbye, my dear, but I am satisfied. I choose to lie with Godwin of my own will. Not the remains of one chosen for me, and I will bear a child who will inherit your warmth too. What greater blessing could there be but to be born a deathbed companion? Wrath of the Golden Order, the Order's justice writ in blood. This is what's become of your precious witch. Naught but expired meat and bone. This is a proper death, O oh Prince. Look at this rotten whore. No more children can be got from this useless flesh. Behold, your mother is dead. <laughs> this is revenge, you witch. And you, you ghoul. This is the wrath of D. Ah, hello. The rotten witch is dead. The Golden Order unsullied. Now I can look my brother Darian in the eye. Honeyed rays of gold. Deliver my spirit.
um, hello. Yes. Strange place for a chance encounter, huh? I thought I could use a rest. Don't mind me. Go about your business. Right, over there. See that? Something shimmering. I swear. Then stay away from the Volcano Manor! <laughs> business might you have in such a place as this? I hardly think you're here to temper yourself with flame, considering that fleshly form of yours. Your timing, though, is impeccable as ever. I've been making just the thing for you on my journey here. Take it. I'm sure it'll suit you to a tea. You know, it's hardly more than lukewarm here. I won't be able to temper my body such that it'll never crack again. Perhaps I'll head eastward. There's an old saying I've caught wind of. Above the lofty clouds, the icy giant's peak doth soar. Here lieth the flame of ruin, which ever burning roars. Aren't you precocious? We rarely receive visitors to the Volcano Manor without invitation. Fascinating. And not unlike another guest we had long ago. So tarnished. Have you ever harbored doubts about the burden of grace and the dogmatic ramblings of the fingers? If you have, why not join the Volcano Manor and fight with us, rise with us against the Erd Tree? Your decision is most welcome. Now you belong to the Volcano Manor family. The drawing room lies down the hall. Make yourself comfortable. I am Tanith, the proprietress of this house. An honor to have you. Joined the manor, huh? I don't believe it. Didn't think you had it in you. All good, though. We're on the same side now. We'll do good work together. 
Oh, and of course, we can do business, if you like. At his Emporium at the Volcano Manor. Especially for you. Are you surprised that I belong to the Volcano Manor? I always hated the gibberish about Lost Grace and the laughable Two Fingers. I thought I could lend a hand in unmasking the charade. Not to mention, Tanith has always made me curious. I guess her master must really be something, because she's pretty damn smug about it. Even after announcing her blasphemous ambitions, she still stands proud. I've never seen a woman quite like her. Cheers for that! Someone please kill him. That horrendous serpent. Praetor Rikard. Hmm. You're tarnished. Here to put the demigods to the sword. Then please, kill the great serpent. The one that devoured Praetor Rikard. I left the serpent slaying spear in the Lord's chamber. Worthy tarnished. Brandish the spear and run him through. The great serpent. That unspeakable monstrosity. Pray to Rikard's ambitions, though blasphemous. Marked him a worthy sovereign. But they were reduced to gluttonous depravity once he gave himself to the serpent. Whatever that thing is, it is no longer Praetor Rikard. Someone must kill him to spare him and his ambitions from further dishonor. that I did not beckon you here with my own hand, but I am pleased that we meet again. Here, at the Volcano Manor, under Lady Tanith's guidance, may you tread the path of valor. You. What in heaven's name are you doing here? The Volcano Manor is a pit of recusants who spit at grace and hunt our own kind. I hope you understand the weight of my words. Well, as long as you understand what you're saying, you have harbored doubts from the very beginning. Perhaps this day was always lurking on the horizon. But know that the path you walk is blasphemy and leads only to a miserable death. Before you consider hunting any of your own kind, think on that. Ah. Oh, it, I've... It's, it's you, is it? Well, nice to see you again. So you've been invited as well, I see. Then we're comrades in arms henceforth. You watch my back, and I'll watch yours. Yes? I, um... I can tell. You're wondering about Lanya. Well, you see, I... After much internal debate, I've come to realize... Revenge is not the answer. According to Lady Tanith, I've got the stuff of champions. And champions, ironic as it is, are oft forced to walk a tainted path. It hit me like a bolt from the blue, that my former thoughts were simple naivety. Of course my heart weeps for Lanya. That unfortunate incident was a cruel twist of fate indeed. But succumbing to the pain and sadness caused won't make me a champion, will it? Lanya knows this, I'm certain. Fate has laid hard roads for us both, but such is true of any road trod by champions. I always resented these hands. 
their pale complexion, a far cry from any warriors. The shame of House Hoslaw, but that won't be the case for long. They'll be darkened by grit once I've set out on the path of champions. The tale of House Hoslaw is told in blood after all. Did you read the letter left for you? That is the task the Volcano Manor desires you enact. You will be compensated once the deed is done. Good luck. If you are loath to hunt your own kin, so be it. But you must leave this house at once. This is a war against the Erd Tree. We have no place for the meek, nor the luxury of keeping clean hands. You've completed your task. I am pleased. Now you are a recusant true, and a full-fledged member of the Volcano Manor. This is your reward, as promised. Never forget that the recusant fights to tread the path of the champion. The way is tainted, but for this very reason, it is the true path to valor. timing. This is for you. You're new here at the manor, but if you complete the request, you can improve your standing. Relax. We're old friends. Time's come to pass the torch, right? Go on, break a leg then. <laughs> Then I shall introduce myself once more. Banal. A recusant, just like you. Recusants have particular battle arts, styled to our methods of slaughter. Why not add some to your repertoire? You've come to understand now, eh? To take power and make it his own. The recusant must hunt his own kind. To raise the flag of revolt against this sanctified pillaging, we recusants must become the most wretched of predators. All you can do is laugh. Well, until we meet again. Ah, it's you, is it? I'm terribly sorry, but would you mind giving me some time to myself? I haven't achieved anything at all thus far. Even though I've dirtied my hands time and time again, 
and still yet to achieve anything. Perhaps I am a fool after all. No, it's worse than that. As things stand, I've given up on the path of revenge and sullied the name of my house. What an easy mark I must have been. How did it take me so long to realize, honestly? There's just no end to my foolishness, is there? To Patch's Emporium. You hunted down Tragoth? Are you certain? No, it's quite all right. Fine work indeed. I'll give Tanith the news. Have some rest by all means. Stingy little beggar. Try to find it in your heart next time, eh? Something on your shopping list? No, no trouble to me. <laughs> Sharper than you seem, aren't you? I was just holding on to it for you, you know. There you go. The reward for hunting Tragoth. All yours. Stingy little beggar. Try to find it in your heart next time, eh? See you've performed another task for us. Here is your usual reward. Please, take it. Now, perhaps the time has come to tell you of the true ruler of this manor, Lord Rikard. The Erd Tree blessed the Tarnished with grace, but it was all too meager in the face of the enormity of their task. The Tarnished were forced to scavenge squabbling for crumbs, like the shard bearers vying for power in the wake of the shattering. Our lord, indignant, has refused to scurry about, fighting over what miserly scraps they allow us. If the Erd Tree, and indeed the very gods, would debase us so, then we are willing to raise the banner of resistance, even if it means heresy. We at the Volcano Manor, under Lord Rikard, have sworn no rest until it is done. If you follow this heroic path, one day the Lord will see you. The Lord's visits with our champions are always a spectacle. It cannot come a day too soon. <laughs> It's 
just as my noble brother says. I'm a complete fool. I can't believe I thought I could become a champion. Look at you. A recusant through and through. I knew you had it in you. Take this. A special invitation to hunt some of the first tarnished who sat at the round table hold. If you should accept, I'll next see you on the field of battle. Perhaps I am a fool after all. No, it's worse than that. As things stand, I've given up on the path of revenge and sullied the name of my house. What an easy mark I must have been. Tarnished. What is your business here? I'm afraid this is not a guest room. What's that peculiar look upon your face? <gasps> Goodness, am I still a serpent? Oh, how dreadful. How dreadful indeed. Oh, forgive my distress. I ought to be thanking you for treating me as usual. Despite this appearance, Brave Tarnished, this is my true form. My real name is Zarias. Please forgive the deception. Do understand. This duplicity is my own doing. Lady Tanith speaks no falsehoods. And the Volcano Manor is just as it seems. Lady Tanith is my mother. I am told I was born by the grace of a glorious king. That my mother cherishes this form I inhabit. I am proud of what I am, but people are cruel. If they saw my true form, they wouldn't speak to me. And so, I assume a guise when seeking new recruits. But you are not like the rest. My serpentine form and the name Zarias were secrets, known only to Lady Tanith and I. Now I share the secrets with you as well. Please keep them safe from anyone else. If you follow this heroic path, one day the Lord will see you. It cannot come a day too soon. <laughs> Did you see her? The girl, Raya? with her true face. Mm. Well, if she confided in you the name Zarias, then perhaps it is not my place to speak. But as her adoptive mother, I ask of you, please be kind to her. Look after young Zarias. Her true visage belies the purity of her heart. Honestly, I hardly deserve the sweet child. It's you. Forgive me. My mind never ceases to churn of late. Hmm. Well, I know I can trust you. I saw something slithering in the pitch black of night. It entered the room next to this one and never came out. If I'm not mistaken, it took the form of a serpent, just like me. Does the Volcano Manor hide some secret that Lady Tanith has kept from me? I realize that I shouldn't impose, but if you discover anything, would you please share?
If you follow this heroic path, one day the Lord will see you. It cannot come a day too soon. <laughs> she said that to you. I should have known something was wrong. The signs were clear enough. Well, Zarias has placed her trust in you. All the more reason I must tell you that some things are better left unknown. Besides, no one should be blamed for their heritage. Think about it. We are resisting the ways of the Erd Tree itself. What matters one's lineage in such a crisis? that lurked in the shadows that night. It entered the room next to this one and never came out. Perhaps the manor yet holds some secrets. If you discover anything, would you please share? Really? Oh, so there was a secret after all. Oh my. Lady Tanith, my own mother, has deceived me. Was I not born by the grace of a king? Hmm. What is this? I remember this sense distinctly. Hmm. If 
funny, isn't it? I am certain of it. I was born inside this. It's a part of my birth, mother. You have my gratitude. Thanks to you, I am no longer afraid. I want to know how I was born and met Lady Tanith one day. I hope to call her mother once again. This time from the bottom of my heart. If you follow this heroic path, one day the Lord will see you. It cannot come a day too soon. <laughs> No. I haven't seen Zarias anywhere, and she has no scouting duties now. Has she gone off in search of answers? Why won't she just listen? May I ask your aid? Not as the manor's proprietress, but as Zarias' mother. If she discovers the answer to her question, and it causes distress, have her drink this potion. To purge that which would cause her pain. Yes, I know. My wish is a grave disrespect to her. No different than the Erd Tree's imposition. But I've no choice. It must be done. Nothing. But this. Free me from this accursed frame. Oh, hello again, cuz. Have you heard? A new potentate's come to the village. I think he said his name was. Dialos. He seems a little down in the dumps, but his hands, as smooth as silk. I don't know. I'm a little disappointed, actually. Even though good Sir Dialos has a wonderful suit of armor, he says he isn't a warrior. And since he's a coward, he won't be fighting anymore. His smooth and silky hands feel nice when he pats us. But I wish we had a potentate big and strong like you. Well, aren't you full of beans? No wonder you're covered in muck. Oh, my friend, it's been far too long. I have to say you caught me at a rather low point. But as you see, I've put all that behind me. Left the Volcano Manor, forging my own path now, making my own choices. Even a fool like me can look after some simple jars. Do you pity me? Well, don't. I feel like for the first time in my life, I'm on the straight and narrow.
are my apprentice. Shall we commence the lesson? What's this sorcery, my apprentice? Ah, then you have seen Master Azure. Master Azure was a founding Glimstone sorcerer, and my first teacher. A stern judge of men. But he must have seen something in you. You make us both proud. We can speak more later, my apprentice. If you recall, I was exiled from the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. It was for attempting to restore the primeval current of Glinstone sorcery. The toothless pedantry peddled by the Carian royal family can rot for all I care. I want Glinstone sorceries that open our minds, unbound by terrestrial taboos. No matter what we give in return. My apprentice, I presume nothing. Teacher and student are not bound to tread the same path. But hear me out, my apprentice. I need your help to restore the primeval current of Glinstone sorcery. Perhaps this is a journey we could take together. Splendid. I thank you. This pleases me. It's been far too long since I found a fellow kindred spirit. You must have a fabulous teacher. I need your help, my apprentice. Master Lusat is another founding Glimstone sorcerer. And like Master Azure, he was banished from the Academy. Now he languishes in prison somewhere. My apprentice, can you find Master Lusat? With this Glimstone key, you should be able to cross the boundary that encloses him. I need him to restore the primeval current of Glimstone sorcery. He's nigh a child of the stars, such as his body now. After his expulsion from the Academy, I heard that Master Lusat returned to his home, a place called Celia, in the eastern Caled Wilds. Thinking about it, I obtained the Glimstone key I gave you from a Celian sorcerer. It wouldn't be too much of a leap to suppose he's still cooped up nearby. Our art draws upon the powers embedded in Glinstone. But what is the nature of such power? Glinstone is the amber of the cosmos. Golden amber contains the remnants of ancient life and houses its vitality, while Glinstone contains residual life and thus the vitality of the stars. It should not be forgotten that Glinstone sorcery is the study of the stars and the life therein. A fact lost on most sorcerers these days. Your appetite for learning is impressive. You make me proud. To have grown little legs so readily. You must have a fabulous teacher. Give me a moment later. I have a favor to ask. The form you see before you is merely a projection. My body lies elsewhere. But the Academy's shackles prevent it being moved. My body is on the Weeping Peninsula at the southern tip of the lands between. Imprisoned in the ruins just down from the Church of Marika past the plain of the wandering mausoleum. Can you make the journey to my body? I have something that I can only trust with you. Who could have guessed? What a place to find Master Lusat. You have my gratitude. This is all your work. I am truly pleased to have you as an apprentice. 
and a kindred spirit. This is a mere token of my thanks. Please, take it. This brings us a full step closer. The bodies of Masters, Azure and Lusat can be admitted to the Academy. If only I could undo these wretched shackles. My apprentice, thank you for coming. These shackles take a toll on us all. There is something I need you to look after. My primal glintstone. A star has fallen, and my fortunes waver. Someone may come for my life, and so I entrust it with you, myself. Thank you, my apprentice. This is my essence. Please, treat it with care. Ah, well met. I hardly expected to see the champion of the festival here. Of all places. You didn't know Selen, did you? Well, whatever the case, she's dead now. Just put it behind you. She was known as the Graven Witch. Obsessed by the primeval current, countless sorcerers fell to her hand. The most dangerous mage in the entire history of Rhea Lacaria's academy. It is strange, though. The woman, she was like a husk. Her soul already fled. I suspect Selen lives on elsewhere. I'm sure she'll turn up eventually, in another body. A sickening thought. But one that won't stop gnawing at me. My apprentice. Just how long has it been? Thank you. You've helped me fill a new body once again. And it's truly a gem. Young and full of vigor, a snug fit for my primal glimstone. Better still, I've shed those awful shackles. Finally, I can return to the Academy to expel the Karian royal family and restore the primeval current. My dear apprentice, I owe this all to you.
My thanks for the aid given. I heard from Eiji that Lady Rani might have found herself a champion. But I didn't know he was talking about you. You've helped me fulfill an old promise. This is the least I can do for you. Please, take it. Well, I must be leaving now. Brave warrior, if the fates deign it. No, we shall indeed meet again at the next glorious tourney. Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? In Marika's own words, I declare mine intent to search the depths of the Golden Order through understanding of the proper way. Our faith, our grace is increased. Those blissful early days of blind belief are long past. My comrades, why must ye falter? You... Please, I can read them. Your fingers, please, your fingers. Fingers I served, once prophesied, a tarnished would one day become Elden Lord and restore the Golden Order. Surely you see it too. The gold that enshrouds the heavens, the great tree which begets the pillars of light. Oh, tarnished. Hasten to the foot of the tree. <sighs> and whatever you might face, the fingers will surely guide you. Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? In Marika's own words, hear me, demigods. My children, beloved, make of thyselves that which he desire. Be it a lord, be it a god, but should ye fail to become aught at all, 
you will be forsaken, amounting only to sacrifices. What are you looking at? Oh, you again, is it? Perfect bloody timing, actually. I got crab cooked up fresh. Mate, there's something I should probably tell you. You heard of the Dung Eater? He's a madman. Has it out for everyone. Curses him. Goes round in his rank armor and all. You see him, though. Stay. Well, away. I was in the same jail as him once, so I know first hand. He's a god-forsaken monster. Not just some petty thug like me. He's a killer. Kills people. And curses the souls. Does all sorts of shit to the corpses. To keep them cursed forever. I ain't seen nothing more disgusting in all my years. I ain't ever been more scared neither. Rooted to the bloody spot while he did that to my friend. Never met someone with a taste for crab I couldn't trust. You've got a real thing here, eh? And it's only getting better. Most thanks for bringing me to the base of the Erd Tree. Here, I can govern my own movement, and thus, the accord is fulfilled. I shall depart to ascertain the purpose I was given. Farewell. I shall leave Torrent, and the power to turn runes into strength. Here, with you, I wish you luck in realizing your ambition. You have fought long and hard. I have no doubt you will become Elden Lord. May you take the throne. Bok the Seamster, at your service, my lord. Ready to make adjustments to your garments. My lord, did you see it? The... the Erd Tree? I... Oh, I don't really have the words for this. But I was so... so dazzled, I felt something stir in my breast. The Erd Tree is waiting for you, my lord. I know it, I do. I feel it in my bones. Oh, please, take the throne of Elden Lord. My lord, have you ever wished you might be born again? Well, they say that Renala of Rhea Lucaria has the power to help people be reborn. Oh, me? Reborn? Oh, look at me. 
when you're this ugly. Well, being reborn, it would hardly make a difference, I'm afraid. You're going already, my lord. Please, do be safe on your journeys. You're beautiful. Bok the Seamster, at your service, my lord. Ready to make adjustments to your garments. Did I just hear my mum speaking? Thank you very much. Mum was always the only one who said I was beautiful. And now, my dear lord, let me hear her voice. Oh, please, if I may dream just once, do you feel the same way my mum did, my lord? Do you think I'm beautiful, despite these looks? <laughs> oh, my lord, my dear lord, I, Bok the Seamster, am forever in your service. May the throne of Elden Lord be yours. Going already, my lord. Please do be safe on your journeys. something. A little while ago, someone started lurking in the wing on the opposite side of the round table. And I can hear, from all the way over there, the howling and wailing of spirits in fear of a curse. I can even hear the repulsive twisted malice in itself. A plethora of spirits in an unceasing cacophony. I can't even imagine. How much suffering inflicted to who knows how many souls. Not even the grafting caused anything like this to happen. You should keep your distance. I know you're strong, but please. Have you ever felt the curse? With your whole being, the pox upon life itself, feared and despised by all, the reviled blessing. <sighs> Apparently not. You are but a lamb, a stranger to defilement, ignorant of your own ignorance. You no longer interest me. I've been long without peace. Don't spoil my quietude. I asked you not to disturb me. Be thankful of the whole serenity. It is all that keeps your death and defilement at bay. felt the curse. I can smell it on you. The box, yet tender. Apparently my seed bed is ripe and waiting. It was a brief respite, I must say. Go and unshackle my corporeal flesh, trapped in the sewer jail below the capital. I can kill you, 
and defile your corpse, then the pox will truly be your own. to be sure that when they're reborn, they'll be cursed, along with their children and their children's children for all time to come. Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? I can't hear them anymore. The voices of the spirits cowering from the curse. I suppose the Dungita must have left the round table. I just pray nothing ill comes of this. Serves me right. Fitting bloody end. For a jumped up little shit with big ideas. Help me out. Would you, mate? I don't want to get cursed. Just let me die. I don't want to live like this. Not anymore. So, please.
Are you here for spirit tuning? Be on your guard, I beg you. He's back. The dung eater, again. I can hear them, the spirits as they howl and lament in fear of the curse. And worse than ever, the reverberations of the twisted malice in itself. But after all this time, I've started to grasp it now. I can hear, in the malison, another fearsome order. There you are. You warded off my blessing, despite the curse stirring within you. No one has succeeded in that before. How? I thought. Then it hit me that you are, in fact, me. And I am the Dong Eater. It is my flesh that must receive the blessing. Give me your blessing. Defile my flesh with the seed bed curse again and again until it is done. Until a cursed ring coalesces and may one day defile order itself. Countless I have killed and countless I have defiled and soon the fruits will be born. Hundreds will be reborn cursed and they'll bear thousands of cursed children who bear tens of thousands more. A few of those will be born just like me and they'll kill and defile and bless in my stead the rotten fools. My fate was the grandest most brilliant of them all. you'd soon return. I have the reward from Lady Tanith. Take it. 
It's yours, by right. Let us tread the path of the recusant together, till we reach the miserable death that awaits us. Continue your reflections, your rhythms. I must be the one to record them. What matters this issue of Radigan, really? The Erd Tree, heart of the Golden Order, lies before our very eyes. Why must these qualms come to you now? We were on the very cusp. Oh, was that you? Sorry, I hardly noticed. I'm a little shaken since the Master ceased his movements. The Master's reflections had heightened as we neared the Erd Tree. While still a precise calculus, the rhythms grew increasingly wild until he simply ceased. Now the Master is facing quite the puzzle. The Golden Order is founded on the principle that Marika is the one true god. However, the name of Marika's second husband, King Consort Radigan, also appeared. Who exactly was Radigan? The Master is stumped. His finger has remained still ever since Radigan's name was discovered. Curse my mediocre mind. The Master only has me. And here I fail him. Was that you? Yes, the Master is still ceased. And after coming all this way, why now, of all times? This is a volume of incantation. It's good to see your enthusiasm. Indeed, I will happily take it off your hands. That is a work of heresy. Its incantations bear no lineage from the Erd Tree. <sighs> Very well. I'll take it off your hands. I cannot afford to maintain my innocence any longer. I must dirty my hands to test my faith, even if it offers only the most meager of hints. I will do whatever I can to help my master. What on earth did you do to the Master? Well, not that I'm complaining. Master's finger moves again, resuming his cogitation. More than good enough for me. I haven't the words to thank you. So I'd like to pass this on to you instead. A glimpse into the heart of the Golden Order. Documented by yours truly. Uh. 
To think that Radigan was Marika herself, or at least such is all I can interpret from the rhythm and calculus of his finger. How would such a thing even have been possible, I wonder? Sadly, I cannot comprehend it myself. Do you have a fuller understanding of the matter? Oh. <sighs> well, either way, I can continue my documentation. In truth, it matters very little whether I understand the Master's thoughts or not. I am merely his scribe. It is my sole and unwavering purpose. What is thy business with these thrones? Ah, Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies, Mikola and Melania. General Radan. Praetor Rikard. Luna Princess Rani. Willful traitors. All. Thy kind are all of a piece. Villagers, emboldened by the flame of ambition. Have it writ upon thy meager grave. Felled by King Morgoth, last of all kings. Tree wards off all who deign approach. We are, we are all forsaken.
Hello again, old friend. Allow me a moment to converse with you. You were unable to enter the Erd Tree, no? Prevented by the mantle of barbs. The thorns are impenetrable. A husk of the Erd Tree's being that spurns all that exists without. The only way to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord is to pass the thorns. My purpose serves to aid in that very act. So I'd like you to undertake a new journey with me to the Flame of Ruin, far above the clouds, upon the snowy mountain tops of the Giants. Then I can set the Erd Tree aflame and guide you down the path to becoming Elden Lord. <laughs> Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? In Marika's own words, O Radigan, leal hound of the Golden Order, thou art yet to become me. Thou art yet to become a god. Let us be shattered, both mine other self. to return. You know what this means. The Earth Tree has spurned you. The fingers remain still, shaken by this turn of events. They are busy consulting the greater will. When they are finished, the fingers will again offer their guidance. About thousands, if not tens of thousands, of moons must first pass. No matter for me, but you. How will you ever manage to wait? My, oh my. Heavens forbid. That is not the domain of mere men. The burning of the Earth Tree is the first cardinal sin. And you say you seek the power of the Rune of Death, too? The Rune of Death goes by two names. The other is Destined Death. The forbidden shadow plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation. Unleashing the Rune now would be unthinkable. The Fingers would never permit it. Nor would the greater will. Mm. But here we are. The fingers dormant, severing our link to the greater will. The realm and all life in ruins. Impossible events transpire beyond the ken of the fingers. Who is to say that the cardinal sin must be cardinal forever? Go on. Finish the job. Take the course you deem most worthy. You must find kindling. Only the smoldering flame in the great forge of the giants on the highest peak in the lands between can burn the earth tree. But special kindling is required to reignite the flame. For the flame to burn the earth tree, a sacrifice is needed of one who envisions the flame. 
him and can lead you to the rune of death. Now go forth. Let the words of the fingers guide you. Think not of the kindling. I shall see to that. All I ask of you is to make the journey to the snowy mountain tops of the giants, far above the clouds. I know I'm asking you to commit a cardinal sin, but it must be done to reach the path beyond. And that is the path I wish to travel. What is your mind? So you're here as well, are you? I realized as we've talked, I'll be a maiden, and you, surely a lord. Go to the door ahead. After divesting yourself of your possessions, it will surely open, and the three fingers will welcome you. May the flame of chaos find purchase within you. If you intend to claim the frenzied flame, I ask that you cease. It is not to be meddled with. It is chaos, devouring life and thought unending. However ruined this world has become, however mired in torment and despair, life endures. Births continue. There is beauty in that, is there not? If you would become Lord, do not deny this notion. Please, leave the frenzied flame alone. I ask you one more time. Please, seek not the frenzied flame. As one who strives to become a lord, deny not the lives, the new births of this world. Those who would are not fit to be called lord when the land they preside over is lifeless. It's been some time. I must thank you for your aid. I told father I would be with him no longer. I remembered the vow I took when I first became a warrior, so many moons ago. This land is much like the one from which I hail. I will call upon the storm to drive away the foulness that has settled on the winds. Again, I am Nefeli Lu, warrior. Some call me by the title of Lady, but I remain the same woman underneath, though I have now abandoned my former guidance. I cannot express how much you've helped me. Should you become Elden Lord, I would gladly lighten your burden. Farewell, fellow warrior. I will remain to summon the storm, but your guidance and your fight surely lie elsewhere. Ah, nice to see you after so long. Safe and sound, I take it, yes? Good. Ah, quite. I have indeed selected a new ruler. Lady Nefeli is strong and just. 
worthy of the burden of Limgrave's lineage. Such is the sincere opinion of I, Kenneth Height, no less. For the time being, I share command of the castle with my lady. But I plan on returning to my fort afterwards, at which time I can fulfill my old promise by raising you to the glory of knighthood. I hope it is just as wonderful as you imagine. Ah, you, is it? Haven't seen your mug in quite some time. As you can see, I'm the new lady's attendant. Freedom was worth squat. B besides, I like it round here. Lady Nefeli still fair of heart and countenance. Still, I have the lady's trust, so I can loot all the corpses I like. <laughs> I'll let you take a look at the goods if you fancy. I hear you help get the girl back on her feet. Though I'm not her foster father anymore, I'd still like to thank you. Sorry, but the time you had to waste. If you're heading to the Forge of the Flame of Ruin, in the snowy mountaintops of the Giants, you'll need to find the Grand Lift of Rold, beyond the Forbidden Region. Or go if you would. Take no heed of Cardinal Sin. The two fingers lost their purpose a long, long time ago. you came but we're fine now the alos fought the poacher though quite a lot of us got broken <laughs> i won't cry though i'm a warrior jar a warrior the tale of house hoslo is told in blood that's the kind of warrior i want to be one day cuz even if i'm scared I'll still fight to protect everyone. Ah, it's you. Uh, uh, the jars. Are they all right? <coughs> Did I defend them? Then all is well. This fool proved his worth in the end. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood. That's the kind of warrior I'm going to be. One who protects everybody.
Please, I can read them. Your fingers, please, your fingers. Turn back. Ahead lies the land of the giant's flame. And the way forth is forbidden. Hear me. The burning of the Erd tree is the first cardinal sin. Doing so will unbind destined death and slay the world itself. Who would dare put you up to such a task? Most certainly not the fingers. Finally, we meet the tarnished, the would-be lord. Oh my. Why the long face? I fear that you were previously acquainted with this vessel. Well, that is most unfortunate. For he is dead. As for his flesh, he gave it to me. Shabriri. I hope you can make your peace with that. You are about to sacrifice something precious. The life of a fair maiden. That you would toss into the fiery forge. Only so that you may be lord. What a horrible thing to ponder. Your ascendancy... ...requires her sacrifice. Whether she wishes it or not. But how would the lord... ...crown so... He looked upon. Chosen tarnished and would-be lord. Dare to tread the path of true rigor. Spare the poor girl. And singe your own flesh in her stead. If you are prepared to show resolve and attain lordship through righteous hardship, then heed the words of I. Shabriri. Chosen, tarnished, and would-be lord, descend into the depths far below the earth tree capital. Seek audience with the three fingers and the flame of frenzy. If you inherit the flame of frenzy, your flesh will serve as kindling, and the girl can be spared, setting you on the righteous path of lordship, the path of the Lord of Chaos. Burn the Earth Tree to the ground and incinerate all that divides and distinguishes. Ah, oh, may Chaos take the world. May Chaos 
take the world! To think we'd meet in such a place. What could your purpose possibly... No. I know well enough who you are. And what I know is good enough for me. Call upon me again, in battle, should you have the need. I'm searching for a fort to the north of the ruins. I heard the master of the fort was given a medallion that allowed him to visit the Halig tree. Indeed, I believe that is where Melania will be found. The Halig tree is hidden somewhere in these northern lands. There is something I'd like to say. My purpose was given to me by my mother, but now I act of my own volition. I have set my heart upon the world that I would have, regardless of my mother's designs. I won't allow anyone to speak ill of that, not even you. His eye, Natella. We're almost there. Castle Sol lies just off to the north, where the other medallion is housed. It will grant passage to the land of the Halig Tree. I see that you've stayed the path of champions. This is your usual reward. Please, take it. Perhaps you are ready. Might you see our lord? Our lord will no doubt welcome you. Another kindred spirit, treading the path of champions. Yes, as it should be. Now, close your eyes for a moment. I will transport you to the Lord's Chamber. Farewell, then. May your visit be fruitful.
Stephen King has remedied. Together we will devour the very God. <laughs> You... it's true then. You've defeated our lord. No. I must thank you. Our lord was yet weak. You have taught us that. Defeat is not the end. Our lord is immortal, and will one day rise again. Stronger. Until then, I must stay the path and do my part. I will leave the Volcano Manor before long. I suggest you do the same. I will miss these encounters. The champion who walks the tainted path shines all the more. I always was an admirer. So? You killed Rykard. I harbor you no ill will. The strong take. Such is our code. Even he was prepared to meet a wretched end when he first took blasphemy unto his very flesh. But any road, the Volcano Manor is no more. Though we may yet fulfill an old promise. We hunted our own kind and took what was theirs. And with everything in hand, the time has come to rise against the Erd Tree. O oh, greater will, hear my voice. I am the recusant Bernal, inheritor of my brother's will, and you will fall to my blade. We refuse to become your pawns. Consider this fair warning. Now you've gone and killed Rykard. <laughs> you scheming little bastard. Cripes, you make this nonsense seem, well, <laughs> less nonsensical. Perhaps a Tarnished will be Elden Lord after all. But for now, this manor is finished. The demigod beast is slain, and Tanith has lost her head. A fine mess. But how else could it end? when Daddy Ambition's head over heels courting Lady Blasphemy. <laughs> well, here I am, untethered once again. Goodbye, my friend.
willing to kill me, are you? <laughs> You've always been so kind and uncompromising. I suppose I knew in my heart of hearts how kind and uncompromising you always were. Bit of a slip up, that's all. I should have stuck to what I know best. No matter. I know I, I can trust you. Gullible, yes, but uh, a good soul. Make certain that Tanith gets this. Oh, it's it's nothing, it's just it makes me sick to see her all bent out of shape. Back on your high horse where you belong. You're able then? Then I can rest easy, my friend. Oh, you... Allow me some time. Our Lord's carcass is vast, and not easily consumed. Dear Rikard, please, find purchase within me. I wish to be your serpent, your family. One day, let us devour the gods together. What is it? I have no need of that. I must continue devouring my beloved lord. personal belongings you scheming little thief the gods demand repentance buff up your boy all of it mm. wait don't tell me is that you oh christ please wait i surrender i surrender i swear
never cross you. Not even close. Ah, it's been ages since I've seen you. I didn't even realize it was you. Took you for a demi-human or some such. Oh, you know how it is. Just an innocent mistake. Water under the bridge, eh? Back to business as usual. Hell's bells. This bandit business is hardly what it's cracked up to be. Especially if we keep running into the likes of you. Hmm. Maybe I'll set up another shop with the lads. Well, finally made it, eh? And just in time for the grand reopening of Patches Emporium, where you won't need a refund, because everything is top-notch. What do I have to beg? Give us a coin or two next time around, will you? Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? In Marika's own words, Hark, brave warriors. Hark, my Lord Godfrey. We commend your deeds. Guidance hath delivered ye through each ordeal to the place ye stand. Put the giants to the sword and confine the flame atop the mount. Let a new epoch begin, an epoch glistening with life. Brandish the Elden Ring for the age of the Erd Tree. Ah, nice to see you. I can't believe you've come all this way. I've been gripped by a terrifying thought. The rhythms and calculus of the Master's finger betray a suspicion of the holism of the Golden Order. A conceit, I am afraid, that cannot be overlooked. Oh, but how could this be? I dread to even entertain the possibility, but somehow... I cannot cast aside my doubts about the Master. Tell me, have I simply lost my head? Only, if the Master were true to the Golden Order, why would he think to breach this forbidden mount of fire? Oh, Master, put my mind at ease. Dispel these fearsome thoughts. I want to place my trust in you, to be your scribe. <laughs>
I see you've laid your hands on the other secret medallion. I'm glad to see my counsel has borne fruit. But the honor of the deed is yours alone. You've made more of yourself than Ensha has. Now, more importantly, both secret medallions are in your hands. I suppose you'd like to know, then. What awaits you on the path ahead? Me too, my friend. Me too. I wait with bated breath. Do you hear me? It is I, Latena. We have reached the land of Mikla's Halig Tree, where Lobo and I began our travels. It's entirely thanks to you that I'm so close to home. These great snow-laden lands stretch far to the north, and beyond the ancient bowers, in the liturgical town of Ordna, lies the place to which I must return. sister of ours. Let the birthing droplet in and create life for us, for all the Albanorix. Thank you. I finally fulfilled my purpose. Our young yet towering sister will give us hope. Now that nothing is left unfinished, I will join you in battle to the bitter end. And when the fighting is done, then you may lay me to rest. Beside Lobo, 
my dear wolf. So the secret medallions led you to the land of the Halig Tree. I'd expect to find Melania there. She who fought Radan to a standstill. Well, if the Scarlet Rot hasn't eaten her away completely. But with the Halig Tree as it is, I suppose Mikola must already be. Ah, my apologies. Lost myself for a moment there. The information you shared is of great value. As promised. Your reward. A secret right, known only to me. You are a true fellow. All I ask is that you remain constant. our purposes are aligned. In which case, allow me to explain myself. I am of Melania's blood, but in what capacity I know not. I could be sister, daughter, or an offshoot. Whatever the case though, I am certain of a kinship between us. There is something I must return to Melania. The will that was once her own. The dignity. The sense of self that allowed her to resist the call of the Scarlet Rot, the pride she abandoned, to meet Radan's measure. Ah, welcome, welcome. How may I help? Oh, Millicent. Finding herself, is she? The words of a true innocent, the dear girl. Well, perhaps this is just as it should be. Little Millicent following in the steps of her mother, no matter what. This is their fate, after all. Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? 
The voices of the tormented spirits are silent again, but it isn't like last time. I'm almost certain. The spirits have escaped their confinement. Did you have anything to do with it, I wonder? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't notice you there. Welcome. How may I help you? My apologies, though. You hardly needed to see me like that. <laughs> oh, it's just... I realized that I'd soon be saying my goodbyes to Millicent, and... My eyes began to well. She is to meet them very soon, her sisters. And when she does, she'll be defeated, surely, and begin to flower. Which is why, if you happen to be present for the girl's fight with her sisters, I ask that you side with the sisters and kill Millicent. It must be done by your hand, no other. Millicent trusts you, rather deeply in fact. Sever that trust. Nurtured by betrayal, her bud will flower most vividly. When Melania ascends to godhood, Millicent too shall be reborn as a scarlet Valkyrie. You can't tell me you don't wish to see it. The superior bud that is Millicent becoming the finest of flowers. I beg of you, kill her with your own two hands. Bests to choose from. Have you taken the lesson now? Killing me is but an exercise in futility. All is well, provided you understand. Let's just pretend it never happened, shall we? your help. I could not have defeated that quartet. I feel as if I've been in your debt from beginning to end. Thank you. With your help, I was able to live as my own person, if only in passing. But this is where things end. I paused to even tell you. I took out the needle myself. 
tell whoever put you up to this that if I am to flower into something other than myself, I would rather rot into nothingness as I am. Please, let me pass alone. The scarlet rot writhes now. Worse than ever. Soon, I won't be more than a mound of flesh. Curse-laden. Untouchable. I wouldn't want such a thing to bring you harm. My daughter, why would you take out the needle? You were so close, so very close to becoming the fairest of all flowers. Would you disown us too, as your mother did? We children of the scarlet rot. Millicent, Melania, do you detest us so utterly? I dreamt for so long. My flesh was dull gold, and my blood rotted. Corpse after corpse left in my wake. As I awaited his return. Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. Wait.
the mark, the true lord. Oh, dear Mikola. Oh, dearest Mikola. My brother. I'm sorry. I finally met my match. is it? So, the Halic Tree. Now, Butterhorsk. I heard speculation Mikola embedded himself in the Halic Tree. But, before he could finish, someone cut the tree open and absconded with his infant form. Indeed. It seems those words held weight. How vexing. That the All-Nine didn't have the full story. Perhaps the Queen's sorrow was justified. Ah, my apologies. Lost myself for a moment there. The information you shared is of great value. As promised, your reward. A secret right known only to me. You are a true fellow. All I ask is that you remain constant. <laughs> is it? Oh, so that's where the so-called Lord of Blood was hiding himself, eh? A fitting little squad for that deluded maniac to bleat about the revival of his precious dynasty, while he turns our fellow tarnished into bloody fingers. Let him stay there. That way, his delusions will remain as they are, distant and unattainable. But Perhaps it's worth looking into. If what I've heard is right, then... Maybe. Ah, my apologies. Lost myself for a moment there. The information you shared is of great value. As promised, your reward. And it is a wondrous thing indeed. You are a true fellow. All I ask is that you remain constant. <laughs>
seek violence. Heedless of my warning, though you have been raised to a night of the dynasty, I am paid to the very depths of my being. I'll ensure you regret this, my lambkin. Enjoy your miserable death. with love. Mikola. You must abide alone a while. Welcome, honored guest, to the birthplace of our dynasty.
What is it? Ah, I see. So Mikola was with the Lord of Blood after all. That is some fine intelligence indeed. With it, the final clue has been brought into the light. One of the last few pieces the round table. I need to put everything together. As promised, allow me to impart to you the last of the secret rites known only to me. I take it thou hast noticed. I shouldn't be surprised. I thought I might expound a little further upon the order I envision. Mine will be an order not of gold, but the stars and moon of the chill night. I would keep them far from the earth beneath our feet. As it is now, life and souls and order are bound tightly together. But I would have them at a great remove and have the certainties of sight, emotion, faith, and touch all become impossibilities, which is why I would abandon this soil with mine order. Wouldst thou come to me even now, my one and only lord? just ahead. I'm glad it was you I traveled with. I must tender my thanks to Torrent, too. Thank you, Torrent. Please continue to lend your aid. Till the end.
I have long observed the lands between. This world is in dire need of repair, and death indiscriminate. Are you prepared to commit a cardinal sin? Very well. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. shall burn. Burn for the sake of the new Lord. Guiding me here. The one who walks alongside Flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. What use do you have for me now? I am a finger reader. I will remain here until their dialogue ends and the fingers speak again. Do as you please. Take whatever course seems most worthy to you. Now you may go. <laughs> <coughs> You'd force this tired old crone to work, even now. Ah, harder task master have I never met. Now, go forth. Do what you believe is right. Type 
take a look around. The round table hold is burned, raised to the ground. Don't worry, I don't blame you. I'll continue spirit tuning just the same as before, which is why I need your help persuading Master Hugh to leave. His roots are so knotted in this place. He won't last much longer if he stays here. His shackles are broken. He's a free man now. It's high time he put the round table behind him. I knew you'd be back. Lay out your arms. Let's get smithing. Yes, I'm my masterpiece to slay a god. That's all I've lived for. And my promise to Queen... And my promise to Queen America. But do me a favor and do... Do look after the girl. some spirit tuning. Oh, is that right? So Master Hugh won't listen to you either. You have my thanks regardless. I'll try and talk him round next time. I know he was given this great entreaty to craft a weapon which could slay a god. Though I can't help but think of it as a curse. A fearsome curse. Put on him by Queen Marika. And if that's the case, I'm not sure there's anything we can do. Oh, Smith, as long as you like. Now, lay out your arms. I've upset the girl. She says that now my chains are broken, I'm free. That if I stay here, I will be ruined with the round table. <laughs> what use have I for freedom now? I smith weapons to slay a god. I have lived and will die doing so upon this spot. Is there any other way? You burned the earth tree, didn't you? Then the round table is soon to follow. Ah, no need to fret about that. The round table holds serve to put a tarnish upon the throne of Elden Lord. And if the earth tree needed to burn for that to happen, then the round table must go as well. I'll stay at the round table for a time. I must learn all that can be taken from this place and sear it into my memory. How could I call myself the All-Knowing if I did any less? The pursuit of knowledge is without end. For knowledge is never a thing complete. Thus, I maintain the mantle of All-Knowing. Perhaps the same could be said of guidance. Who is to say whether we'll remain who we are once the fight is finished? What do you think? As one who aspires to become Elden Lord,
finally made it here yourself. The city hanging in the air is slowly crumbling. What an incredible place we find ourselves. But that aside, you're certainly a force to be reckoned with, eh? I doubt there's a single soul who could have handled that giant other than you. It was practically a god. Of course, I count myself the great Alexander among many. Which means I've but one thing to ask of you. Would you kindly undertake my ordeal? Come and tell me when you're ready. I've been longing to fight a warrior as accomplished as you. You are ready then, I take it. Then let us begin. I am the great Jar Warrior. I am this Alexander. Lend me strength, O warriors. Let us become one champion. As I suspected, victory was impossible. This vessel was found lacking. My thanks. I knew you were the stuff of champions. It was a marvelous battle. I implore you, take what I bequeath from inside me. All vessels are destined to one day break. But the great Alexander lived as a warrior to his last. <laughs> The big, wide world. <sighs> Thanks for coming back, cuz. I've been thinking. It's time for me to set out on a journey. As a warrior, Jar. Upon the path of champions. Wow. Cuz. Are these insights from Uncle Alexander? <sighs> Thank you. Cuz. I'm a warrior jar. So I need to be strong. I can really have them. Right? I understand. I'll get strong. Strong enough. I deserve to have Uncle's insights. I don't think I'll see you again. When I set out, warriors are supposed to work alone. Goodbye, cuz. And thanks for everything. I'll never forget you, cuz.
become my blade once more. unbound. And the lands between are shrouded by death's dark fate. But the flames will also burn the impenetrable thorns. It is then. You'll be Elden Lord yet. Smith. Now, let's get smithing. Could you tell me what happened? Why is the round table burning? In ruins. Why does that girl weep for me? 
Oh. Have I forgotten something of dire importance? I see. You're here for some spirit tuning. Ah, uh, so it wasn't just me this happened to. To think he'd forget who you were as well. I knew he'd burn himself out. Old Hugh. I think we could talk him into leaving the round table hold now. But maybe it's better that we don't. It's only proper that we respect his choice to stay. I'll remain with Hugh. He made me who I am today. I'd like to return the kindness in whatever small way I can. Please, become Elden Lord. Hugh was always saying that you were a lord to him. So slay her with the weapons he smithed. Slay the god Marika, who cursed us all. Oh, it's you. I finally come to understand. The Master is nothing more than a madman. Enchanted by a vain and ruinous delusion, he rejected the perfection of the Golden Order, seeking to supplant our glorious faith with his own. <laughs> Could there be a more pitiable comedy? Look at it. The culmination of perfection. Burning before our very eyes. <laughs> state of affairs. I commend your spirit, but alas, none shall take the throne. Queen Marika has high hopes for us, that we continue to struggle unto eternity. Long and hard didst thou fight. 
tarnished warrior. Spurned by the grace of gold. Be assured the Elden Ring resteth close at hand. Alas, I am returned. To be granted audience once more. Upon my name as Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. Given the courtesy enough. <sighs> now I fight just horror.
Fallen leaves tell a story of how a tarnished became Elden Lord. In our home, across the fog, the lands between.
Our sea will look back upon us and recall. An age of fracture. The fallen leaves tell a story of how a tarnished became Elden Lord. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Seed will look back upon us and recall the age of order. The fallen leaves tell a story of how a tarnished became Elden Lord. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Our seed will look back upon us 
and recall. The age of the Duskborn. The fallen leaves tell a story of how a tarnished became Elden Lord. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Our seed will look back upon us and recall the reviled curse that defined our age the blessing of despair It will surely open, and the Three Fingers will welcome you.
the flame of chaos has nestled within you. Could you please rest your hand upon me? Burn me with the flame to make me your maiden. of the three fingers as your maiden allow me to divine them all that there is came from the one great then came fractures and births and souls with a greater will made a mistake torment despair affliction every sin every curse every one born of the mistake and so what was borrowed must be returned, melted all away with the yellow chaos flame, until all is one again. Those who gave me grapes howled without words, saying they wished they were never born. They come, their lord, take their torment, despair, their affliction, every sin, every curse and melt it all away as the lord of chaos no more fractures no more birth You have inherited the frenzied flame, a pity. You are no longer fit. Our journey together ends here. And remember, should you rise as the Lord of Chaos, I will kill you. As sure as night follows day, such is my duty. For allowing you the strength of runes, goodbye, my companion. Goodbye, Torrent.
Lord of Frenzied Flame. I will seek you as far as you may travel. To deliver you what is yours. Destined Death. The battle is over, I see. I do solemnly swear to every living being and every living soul. Now cometh the age of the stars, a thousand year voyage under the wisdom of the moon. Here beginneth the chill night that encompasses all, reaching the great beyond. into fear, doubt, and loneliness, as the path stretcheth into darkness. Let us go together. My dear Consort Eternal. 